And when you hear the sound of the drum, we'll be saying, here we come. Yeah, here we come. So a terrific, terrific opening gambit there on the uh, on the presentation. Fabulous scenes there with a really uh, stirring music there coming through. And now the riders will be ladies and gentlemen, welcome to back to, us to, and to the audience. More importantly, the of course, British Speedway Grand Prix 2022. Great, uh, crowd in here. We've missed. Terrific atmosphere. This is when the riders will really experience what Cardiff is all about and uh, how they react Are to it, Chris. I know that you've been here and it is something quite special when you come out into the auditorium. It is, yeah, yeah. It's um, it's smashing stuff. And you know, just hearing that music earlier, it's 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 designed to build up the atmosphere, to build up the crowd, but you hear it down in the pit lane as you're just waiting to come out into the auditorium and it it really does lift you. It, it, you, you realize that you're at the biggest speedway event in the world. Sure does. Riders. Something you're going to have to cope now, with we'll as well, of course. It's uh, an unusual here. experience. Well, Chris Chris Pumphrey Pumphrey has here. this uh, type oh, of interaction. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Right, it's uh, beginning to appear. Introduced to the crowd in due time. Um, uh, a great moment there. I do believe that could have been Leon Flint yeah. coming out there. What a moment for the youngster. We'll be racing tomorrow in the SGP2 round. So lunchtime tomorrow, Leon will be getting the opportunity to show his skills. But what an opportunity and what an experience for the youngster right now. Yeah, I'll be hoping he gets a ride tonight. But even if he doesn't, you know, just soaking up the uh, atmosphere here will stand him in good stead for tomorrow. Tom Brennan also a track reserve, another young star that will be out tomorrow in the SGP2. And of course, he'll be lapping this all up. This is a first time experience for those two young lads. Now, here we see the wild card, Adam Ellis, actually, who had an accident yesterday and is not fully fit. Good to see him here, Chris, but there are question marks over his fitness. Yeah, there are. It was a very awkward looking crash he's dislocated his collarbone uh, which is a an awkward injury it is a bit painful but i spoke to him earlier today ahead of uh, coming out on parade and he said he's, he's feeling good enough to take the fight out there on the track fingers crossed he can perform at his very best under leopard as we saw there briefly coming from Latvia, he will replace the injured Martin Vasilik, who has got a broken shoulder blade. Now, here's a man that so many people are talking about, Dan Bewley. A lot of people predicting that he's going to win. He said in the interview earlier he hasn't made a final yet. <laughs> but uh, for Dan Bewley, there's no doubt that he's become a firm fan favourite. Yeah, the fans are piling on the pressure now, saying, yeah, we're going to get a Grand Prix win out of him this year. Well, I mean, it would be fantastic if he did. He's certainly got the character to handle the pressure of events like this. Very laid back, young man. And it's Thompson there, the Danish rider, of course, who won in such fine style in Gorjov uh, last time out. And the celebration afterwards was quite uh, remarkable as well. He really was quite overcome with excitement. But Anders Thompson, who um, uh, rode so spectacularly well, and that was great to see. Jason Doyle there as well, of course, riding so well in Britain. And can he put on a big display? Robert Lambert, a big contingent, of course, four riders from Great Britain in the lineup tonight. Patrick Dudek, who won in uh, Germany. Freddy Lindgren back from illness, beginning to find his form. Matze Janowski needs to find some form. Ty Wolfenden has had three second places here. Wolfenden, the three-time world champion, would desperately want to win, of course. And uh, I sense that he will be uh, very determined to do so. Leon Madsen in the background there as well, Chris. Won here in 2019 in Five Star. He did, and he's laying second in the championship. And he's one of only two riders this year to have made all of the uh, semi-finals. So, uh, you know, that's why he's up there at the top, along with Bartosz Marslik. Bartosz Marslik, the uh, world championship leader, has never failed to make the final here. So a terrific record. He's won here once. But, uh, as I say, his consistency in the principality is... Uh, uh, second to none. So the boys will line up and we'll just uh, rattle through them once again for you. We've just given you a little bit of a background on where they're at form-wise and what they've been up to. Of course, we've had the Speedway of Nations very recently where the Australian team came through in flying colours where they won the championship for the first time in 20 years. And that was a great achievement by Mark Lemon and his men. Great Britain 
picking up silver and uh, of course bronze going to the Swedes. Good week of Speedway, Chris. It was a fantastic week of Speedway. Uh, the form book went upside down at times. We had uh, teams like Finland, Czech Republic really mixing it at the very top end and uh, a great finale in Australia. Deserved so champions in the end. They were dogged all Are the way through the competition. Uh, fully deserved the victory. Doing the business in the final. Certainly jumped out of gates two and four and clinched the deal. Who's going to win tonight? So many people can't choose. So much expectation in the air. Uh, there's no doubt. We were listening to Tony Ricardson earlier on, talking about somebody's got to take it to Bartosz Marslik. Leon Madsen in second place. But that's Leon Flint coming forward. A great moment for him. Track reserve. Tom Brennan also a track reserve. Will they get an opportunity? Quite possibly. Tom Brennan really making big strides in the sport. Yeah, I just love watching Tom ride. He's, uh, he's been fantastic this year, made such rapid progress. Wild card, Adam Ellis won the British final last year, and because of the curtailed events in uh, Manchester recently, he gets the wild card tonight. Andre Lebedev from Latvia coming forward. No stranger to Grand Prix Speedway, but uh, he comes in for the injured. Martin Vashley. Yeah, unfortunately, he didn't get any laps in the qualifying practice because his bikes didn't turn up in time. Pavel Szapelski coming forward now, the Polish rider has found Grand Prix Speedway tough this year. Qualified well, but then missed the time. So he actually only got the 16 pit, so that was disappointment. The absolute opposite of this man, never ridden better, Jack Holder in the form of his life, topping the charts in qualifying, winning the Speedway of Nations recently. Keep your eyes out for Jack tonight. And of course, Max Frick partnered him to that fantastic victory in Boyens. He's been so inconsistent this year, but the only victory he's had this year was in the Narodovi, a very similar track tonight. Yep, that's very true. Mikhail Mikkelsen coming forward now, the two-time European champion. Started the season like a house on fire, making the first two finals. Has had some injury dramas, but I sense that he's fully fit now. What a reception for Bewley. I said he's a fair, firm fan favourite. That is certainly being borne out by the reception he's just had there on the introduction. Great. Absolutely super. Uh, wonderful to see Jason Doyle, this man, fantastic form uh, around the various leagues. Needs to find some consistency in Grand Prix. Seems a little more relaxed this weekend. Yeah, good to see Jason here, as you rightly say. Terrific reception also for Robert Lambert. Lambert's made one final this year already. He's knocking on the door of something special, you suggest. Could it be tonight? Patrick Dudek, uh, Chris. Yeah, Patrick Dudek, fantastic in Tetro. I would say uh, a surprise winner there, given track conditions, but he did an absolutely fantastic job. And, uh, you know, if, if it gets tricky again tonight, could be doing the same here. Well, here's the extrovert of the crowd. There's no doubt about that. The ever-smiling Anders Thompson. Superb effort last time in Gorjov. He'll be keen to put on a big performance tonight. Ty Wolfenden, look, he's just soaking this up. Absolutely just loving that. the atmosphere. Just listen to that, the three-time world champion, desperate for a win here in the Principality. Could it be his night? Freddie Lindgren, always a hard charger, loves riding here in Britain, has a proud record riding for Wolverhampton. And uh, he's looking like he's back to his best. That's a Janowski coming forward now. He knows what it's like to win here in the Principality. Won back in 2017. He's been out of form, lacking in confidence. Could he turn it around tonight? Yeah, one of just uh, three riders in the lineup that have won here in Cardiff. Here's another one of them. Leon Madsen, 2019. Stunning win here. Absolutely outstanding performance. Second in the World Championship. Needs a big performance. And this man, what can you say about him? 18-point lead in the Championship. He'll be looking to extend that, but but uh, someone needs to take the chase to him. Let's hear it for all 18 riders. So there we are. Artosh Marzlik coming forward as the last rider to be introduced to the crowd. Um, uh, so we've met the riders, ladies and gentlemen. Would you now please be up so Let's uh, stand the and pause for the national, national anthem. anthem.
please remain standing for the national anthem of Great Britain, God Save the Queen. Wonderful renditions of the national anthems of Wales initially and then of course sort of the UK. Riders will now make their way back. This is when now boys will begin to focus on their first Thank races. You, ladies and gentlemen, the riders are making their that way was, back. Uh, to the one pits. wonderful you, introduction here this evening. It's almost showtime. So to take you through the next oh, yeah. not too much races, longer now before the action the will be underway. The man with the best in the house is the voice of Cardiff for the last 20 odd years. Please welcome back. Jason so, Chris, Harold, this is the moment so of truth much. for these boys now. We've Ladies got the gentlemen, preliminaries gentlemen, out of the way, and now it's all about the action on the track. We saw some action on track yesterday with uh, obviously Adam Ellis getting uh, in sorts of problems, but Jack Holder and Dan Bewley once again, the two substitute riders coming out on top of the timing charts. It's fantastic to see these youngsters have just made steady progress all, all series long so far. Uh, each of the five previous Good rounds have just made that progress, they've learned something new. Oh, and both fantastically quick yesterday. Indeed they were, and uh, that was a fine. So here's the championship standing, 78 points uh, for Butter Smarslik, 18 points in front of Leon Madsen. Vasilik isn't here, 53 points for him. Inoski also on the same, Lingren in there on fifth. 51, 54 Wolford and Anders Thompson with that big win last time on 49. Dudek also 49. So tight, right down to 12th with Mikkel Mikkelsen. Anybody from 4th to 12th coming up with a massive I haul of points is going to change well their Grand Prix campaign ready. entirely. Max Fix the one that's dropped away after winning in that Adobe. And Jack Holder there with 32. But there's no doubt that uh, there's still plenty of opportunities for wins and the top six to guarantee you a Grand Prix future. Yeah, the top six is a big, big race this year. There's uh, so many guys in contention, as you rightly say. And uh, we're just looking at shots now down in pit lane. As the lads make their way back, they're going to just have their last minute checks with bikes, talking to uh, their mechanics. And now it's time to focus. So there's the scene. That's the stage these boys have been given. I will just take a moment now just to say that we are extraordinarily grateful for all the fans making the effort to come to the Principality. We know that the costs of living have gone up by 30 to 35 percent. Fuel prices as a train strike on. So it really, the you know, prices here in the stadium have remained solid. But still, nonetheless, it's been a great effort by everybody concerned to be here this evening. And I'm sure they're going to be royally entertained. Will it be this man's night? He's out of gate number four in the opening race, Ty Wolfenden. Patrick Dudek also will be there as well. These are the moments where now you really have now got to just settle down, pull your helmet on and really just think about when that green light's going to come on. Yeah, you've got to feed off the atmosphere rather than let it sort of get to you and, and uh, you know, make you even more nervous. You've just got to feed off it. You've got to use it as excitement rather than nerves. And uh, that's exactly what these boys will be doing. Interesting point you say, can't disagree with it, but it is easier said than done, isn't it? Because it can sometimes, if you're out of form particularly, it might just overwhelm you in some regards, you know? Well, that's exactly why I said you've got to try and turn that into excitement. But yeah, it's very easily done from here behind this microphone. I have no problem with it whatsoever. I can, I can advise from here, but uh, actually handling it is slightly different. Yeah, winning here is, there's no question that it's uh, extra special with the... Uh, the special atmosphere that the Principality generates. Uh, they're the boys for the opening ride. Matze Janowski has won before here. Um, uh, Dudek, a former world number two as well. Quality there. We've got uh, Chapelski also in the first race. He'll come out of gate number three. 
That was a mistake he made. He qualified in third place yesterday against Schapelski, but there's a time limit to get yourself ready for the draw, and he missed it. Yeah, he wasn't in the line ready to uh, make his pick, so he had to go to the back. Um, so, yeah, I, I, you know, I don't think um, having draw number three was the end of his world. I think there could have been worse ones that uh, were inexplicably taken already, but um, no, it was uh, unfortunate. Uh, track conditions yesterday did cut up a little bit more than we've seen in more recent uh, Cardiff tracks, and um, Adam Ellis did uh, pay the price for just collecting a little bit too much grip as he made maximum effort to try and put in a fast lap and an awkward crash for him. But uh, now we're ready, now we're ready for action. Bikes pushing off, just about to come out to the roar of this crowd. Absolutely right, here they come then. The gladiators emerge from the tunnel. Great reception. Uh, the boys will be getting a little bit of a feel for track conditions straight away. They did work very hard on the track after practice yesterday. I remained for about an hour after the qualifying, and they really did just take the top dressing off and then really pound it down. As you rightly say, it did break up a little bit towards the end of qualifying. It caused one or two issues. We are expecting it to behave here this evening. So the lineup for the opening race then, Yanossi on the inside in red, Patrick Dudek coming out of gate two in blue, Pavel Chappelle will come out of gate number three in white, and Ty Wuffenden will go from the outside in yellow for the opening heat here. First time we've been back in three years. We are absolutely privileged to be in this arena. It really is something very special indeed, and I'm sure we're going to be in for some show here tonight. There's no doubt about that. Just sense that, that something pretty special is going to happen here tonight. It is, and Janoski is one of those guys that needs to pick up the fight. He's got, so he hasn't made the semi-finals in each of his last two rounds, and uh, he is a previous Cardiff winner, as I said, one of only three in this lineup. So he's got to take advantage. Yeah, he's got the inside gate, chose number one, so he'll come out every time the track's been freshly prepared, but uh, he fancied two inside gates. The inside gate here in the Principality has been successful over the previous 19 stagings of this event, so that was on the minds of the riders that had the opportunity to take it because Holder didn't hesitate with taking the draw number five, which gives you exactly that. You start on gate one, you finish on gate one for your qualifiers, nicely spaced races. Our rates are up. Schapelski looks pretty relaxed there on gate number three, so um, we'll watch how he gets on. Do hope that uh, Ty Wuffenden, after that injury he sustained in a training accident in uh, Denmark, he's fully fit. But here we go, the opening race of the night in the Principality. Here we go, the green light's on, takes her up and we're away. They charge towards the first turn. Janowski fires himself to the front. Wuffenden roaring around the outside, but it's Dudek up the inside. But Wuffenden powers his way once again. Just about hanging. No, it's Dudek. in second, Wuffenden there in third, Chapelski out the back, stunning move from Dudek early on Chris. Fantastic move, definitely a mistake from Janoski there, you've really got to get that front wheel right over, you can see some of the riders, particularly Ty Wuffenden, got his front wheel right over that curve, it's a tricky manoeuvre to make, the track actually drops off there, the front wheel becomes very low and you can easily ground out the engine, but uh, they're all at the moment, it's all around the inside. That straight for the last time in the opening race here in the Principality. Oh, show voting there from Dudek. Bars himself to three points. What a start to the night from him. Didn't make the start of gate number two, but Janowski just running slightly wide. Possibly a mistake there from Janowski, but Dudek was ready to pounce. Stunning opening race. Wolfenden back in third. Well, once again, we're off to a dynamite start here. There's the result then. Dudek out in front, picks up three points. Janowski back in second, two for him. Wuffenden third one, and Chapelski missing out. Good opening heat, Chris. Yeah, tight opening heat, and that's what these indoor tracks are all about, the one-off tracks. The early heats in particular, you've really got to be focused not to drift off the inside line. As soon as you give someone the opportunity, as we saw that time out from Patrick Dudek, they will take it. And he did with both hands. 
that's found his form. We'll watch it again now. Yeah, Janoski from the inside. He makes a clear start. Absolutely wonderful start. He's done his job there. Surprised to see him running quite so wide, even in the first turn, but he got away with it right there. And uh, Patrick Dudek's just patient for the first couple of laps. Keeps the bike around the inside. Now look at that front wheel. It's right over the kerb. The kerb drops off there about another six to eight inches. So uh, easy to uh, ground out the engine, but he didn't do so. He just got it right. Creeps up the inside once he got his uh, nose in front. No looking back. You've got to keep it around the kerb in these opening few heats. And he did it uh, in uh, spectacular style. Lovely bit of showboating as he come out of the last corner to complete the race. So they'll be uh, very pleased with uh, their start to the night. The ideal start for the uh, Tetro Grand Prix winner earlier this year. Uh, could it be his night? Certainly started in fine style. Heat number two, then off the inside in red is Jack Holder. Alongside him is Adam Ellis, the wild card in blue. Leon Madsen second in the world right now, coming out of gate number three in white. And Robert Lambert from the Great Britain will go from the outside in the yellow helmet colour. Heat's coming thick and fast. Concerns over Adam Ellis's fitness. We do hope that he's OK because uh, this is a great opportunity for him. It is, yeah, this is a moment to savour for him and he will be hoping that that uh, sore collarbone is not going to give him too many problems. Uh, he's had physio on it all morning, so there's been some quite intensive treatment going on. Uh, the track's riding nicely at the moment, so uh, fingers crossed it doesn't pull him too hard. That man on the inside, Jack Holder, was uh, terrific yesterday. No doubt uh, the confidence is uh, sky high after winning the Speedway of Nations Road really well in Boyens. He reproduces that sort of form here tonight. He will be a major threat for all the other competitors. Heat number two then. Settling down nicely. Green light comes on now. Oh, a little bit of movement from Madsen. We're away. And Madsen's made a goal. Oh, better start from Lambert. Lambert's out of control. Here we go. Up the inside. Charging through. There comes Jack Holder. Messi first corner. Riders going all over the place, but Holder took the advantage of the big hole such a, an initial one. All sorts of problem analysis off. Same he place. crashes out in a very similar place. Red lights are on. Uh, you have to wonder if that's his fitness, just not up to it, because uh, track not, not difficult. Uh, we expect it will cut up a little bit, but not just yet. Wow, exactly the same place he crashed yesterday. But Lambert was out of control as well. He did well to hang on to the motorbike in the first corner. He'd made such a good start and run from the outside. Lifted violently, did well to hang on to it. And that was the opportunity for Holder then to get his nose in front. But you're well, you could well be right, Adam Ellis. Certainly, possibly not uh, at full strength. Uh, the problem right now, the, the riders have walked the track. They all know that it's packed down very, very hard. It's going to be slick. It's going to be very difficult to find any traction. They've all got very brave setups. I think they've all probably uh, gone as far as they can with the bike set up to give them maximum traction. And then when something does happen, it happens very, very quickly. It does indeed. That's uh, the nature of the sport these days. And Adam is uh, on his feet, and that's good to see. Uh, Jesper Steentoft is uh, the referee. We'll see this again. Yeah, Adam at the back there. Very, actually, almost identical crash. He doesn't get thrown over the handlebars this time, but exactly the same mistake. Just collects something there. Uh, there obviously is a bit of a rut or a berm and uh, just plants him underneath the air fence. He doesn't need that. He'll be feeling sore enough before uh, before that. He was losing ground. I've got to say, he wasn't riding like he's uh, anywhere near fit. Well, he is excluded, and uh, so there will be a rerun. But um, uh, no question that uh, we keep our hopes high that uh, Adam Ellis can take his place in his upcoming heats, but there must be a question mark over that. Doesn't want to do any further damage, of course, and put himself out for a longer period of time but no doubt in that first corner it caught out Lambert initially and at this early stage of the night that's a little concerning if there is a rut appearing immediately so we'll keep an eye on that but uh, there will be a short pause now while we wait for the restaging of heat number two we've had drama right from the get-go tonight Chris that's yeah. for sure yeah, as, as I said, you know, I, I think the guys have gone to the extreme to find the most traction they possibly can, and it, then it doesn't take very much at all with the track conditions to catch them out. OK, let's get down with uh, Scott Nichols now. He's going to be joined by Patrick Dudek. Yeah, we just have a little pause while uh, Adam's up to fall there. Patrick, 
heat one winner. Very, very smart move on that first lap. Yeah, tough, tough, tough uh, first hit for me because I don't have perfect start, but I stay the inside because the first hit is the best line here. So, yeah, it was fast the inside. I think it uh, will be very important today's start. So, and will be many holes in the inside. So, it's a very good work and good speed for the bike. Is the track much different to practice? You just said there, there's some holes starting to appear. Hard to say now, uh, but we will see what's happened later with the track. The gate was different, of course, because uh, yesterday we start all the time with the hold. When you start the first hit, you don't have hold on the gate. So this is, was a little bit problem for me, but later we'll be okay. Well, it's no problem with the wind, so good luck for the rest of the night. Thanks, Patrick. Thank you. Yeah, stunning opening ride from Patrick Dudek and uh, an accomplished performer, of course. He dropped out of the Grand Prix, but battled his way back, which was to his internal credit. And uh, as you say, heat number one was all about him. And he's got his Grand Prix off to the ideal start. Riders now making their, back, uh, their way back round to the start gate for the restaging of heat number two. Jack Holder is the first one to appear. Robert Lambert had a scare in the first corner. He's probably his heart rate would have gone through the roof at that point, that's for sure. And uh, Leon Madsen, who actually dropped the clutch really well, but yeah. it's uh, that charge, uh, you know, Lambert made a really good run to the turn, and uh, there was all sorts of, it was an untidy first turn, and Holder took the, the advantage. So Holder's on the inside in red, Adam Ellis excluded, Leon Madsen comes out of gate three in white, and Robert Lambert coming off the outside in the yellow helmet color. Yeah, Jack Holder will be looking to do it all again. He'll be frustrated having hit the front on that first lap. So uh, frustration for him. But he's, as you said earlier, Kelvin, he's in absolute form of his life at the moment. Yeah, riding very composed. And there's no doubt that uh, he's growing in stature. Of course, he's a substitute rider. Wasn't planning to be in the Grand Prix permanently this year. But with the suspension to the Russian riders, he's in. And as I say, he came of age in the Speedway of Nations riding for Australia. There's no question about that. Never seen him ride better. And... Uh, his uh, performance in qualifying yesterday kind of backed that up by topping the timesheet. So, riders just beginning to settle down and uh, get themselves together for heat number two. Uh, Ruts will appear quickly on the start line, and uh, they could be an issue later on because they get very deep. You're going to have to be conscious of that, not to ground out and kill your momentum on that charge for the first corner. Leon Madsen coming forward now in gate number three. Start Marshall appears to be pretty happy he is. Green lights on. Tapes up and we're away. Rushing into the first corner. It's level. Leon Madsen terrific ran that first turn. But here comes Holder again. Holder firing the bike up the inside. Charges into turns three and four in the opening lap. Madsen's right there. They have it back in third place. Leon Madsen, Chris, made a superb start there. But once again, just getting caught out in that first turn. And Jack Holder and firing himself to the front. Yeah, he left hardly any room at all for Jack Holder, but he didn't uh, He didn't need a lot. He just got the bike driving off the first turn. Uh, Leon had done all the work on the way to the corner, but Jack Holder certainly took advantage up the inside on that first lap. Looks reasonably comfortable out front. Looks like the fastest guy on track at the moment. Looking good out in front with uh, just under a lap to go. Holder, that form that we saw a couple of weeks ago, certainly retains here. Winning at a canter, that is a terrific start, and he's delighted. Madsen back in second place, Lambert charging hard in third place. That first turn move from Holder once again, he did it twice and got the advantage. And clearly delighted to start with three points. Absolutely terrific stuff from him. Leon Madsen won't be disappointed either. Two points, a solid start from the man in second place in the World Championship. Three points for Jack Holder, then a winner in fine style. Leon Madsen, second place for him too. Robert Lambert back in third place one, and Adam Ellis was excluded from heat number two. But um, Jack Holder, that Happy. form retains. Yeah, absolutely. He looks, it looks like he's just enjoying riding his bike. He's riding so well. And uh, he's got some great help in the pits with a two times Cardiff winner, of course, Chris Holder, his brother, uh, giving him the advice. We can see on the first turn, there's the, the, the mistake actually from Madsen. He makes such a terrific start, gets it to the corner, but he lets the bike go across the corner. I don't know whether he thought he'd got to stop the run of uh, Robert Lambert, but he left a massive hole for Jack Holder and he took full advantage of it. Really had the bike set up nice, looked comfortable on the track. He did indeed. And. Uh... 
clearly delighted. You can see him beginning to celebrate coming out of turn number four on the uh, last lap. So uh, overjoyed with that, Chris, of course. Such an accomplished performer here. The 2012 world champion there on the right. That's Chris and Jack, his younger brother there to the left. So as you rightly say, Chris, um, uh, invaluable advice coming the way of young Jack Holder. We will see how far it takes him tonight, but uh, wouldn't be surprised to see him in the final if he continues riding like that. So heat number three then. Anders Thompson out here. A fabulous win last time in Gorjov. Artos Schmarslik, who many people are saying is not quite at his best, but he is in control of the World Championship, so that kind of undermines that comment a little he may, bit. He may not be at his best, but he's got an 18 point lead and uh, doing quite well. So here we go, the lineup heat number three. Bartosz Schmarslik off the inside in red. Anders Thompson comes out of gate number two in blue. Andre Lebedev's coming in for Martin Vasily out of gate number three in white. And Jason Doyle will go from the outside in the yellow helmet colour. Andrei Lebedevs didn't have his bikes here for qualifying yesterday. Did a couple of laps on Max Frick's bike, but he has now got his own equipment, so he should feel a lot more comfortable. Uh, he's not uh, not new to Grand Prix Speedway, Andrei Lebedevs, a former European champion, so he uh, he's accomplished at, at the highest level. Be interesting to see how he gets on now. Hit number three, then. Here we go. Green light comes on now. Up and away we go. Smarslick's made a smashing side on the inside. He fires himself to the front. Big crash going into the first turn between Lebedevs and Doyle. And they all got their level. No racing room on the outside. Lebedevs had nowhere to go with Thompson there right alongside him. And Doyle, that domino effect in the first corner. And uh, they go plowing into the air fence. Yeah, I can see Jason Doyle is just wedged under the air fence, a very uncomfortable position to be in. I've been there once or twice myself, but I think it was just a, a tough first turn. Nobody gave, as you said, uh, domino effect. I would be uh, very surprised to see any exclusion lights on. I would expect to see all four back. Every possibility of uh, four riders back here. Lebedev is up on his feet, making his way back. Jason Doyle, just a um, little bit of concern about him because he did disappear underneath the air fence there. So. Let's hope that all's well there, because uh, a rider that um, is very popular in the UK and has been riding superbly well here, so I was looking for a uh, big night, but um, uh, an awkward looking fall for him. He really did feel the full brunt of that as they charged into that first corner. It does actually, it is quite narrow on the entrance to the corners here, so you know, when they all get their four abreast, we'll see it again, we'll see exactly what happens. Yeah, Lebedev's in white and Jason Doyle in yellow. They just, just come together there. And then Anders Thompson also just comes to the party and gives Lebedev's a, a slight nudge. And unfortunately, Jason Doyle is the innocent party, just trying to make his way to the corner and gets picked up and taken straight underneath the fence. Uh, he went through with a fair force. You can see he took a little bit of a, a whack in the back, but I mean, the air fences do a fantastic job. So hopefully no injuries there. Yeah, we're having it confirmed now that all four will be back, and that's the right call. Um, a classic case of uh, first turn bunching. Lebedev yeah. said just the meat and the sandwich. He had nowhere to go. He couldn't get out of the way of no. Thompson. And he, he couldn't turn the bike anymore. No. So, um, uh, that was a clear example of what can happen at a speedway race when they're charging into that first corner. It's going to be an action-packed night. There's no doubt about that. You know, the adrenaline is uh, up, no doubt. And uh, everybody wants to uh, get off to a fast start. It does appear that uh, Jason Doyle, yeah, that's yeah, good news. Back. That's great, he's a tough man, very tough man. Those two years when he dominated the World Championship in 16 and 17, he didn't do it without his injury problems, oh, and he no. battled on, broken third. I mean, how on earth he did it, it really was a superhuman effort. And uh, when he clinched it in Australia, down in Melbourne, it was uh, a terrific effort from him. So, right, let's um, uh, get some more reaction now. We will get down to Scotty Nichols. He's joined with uh, Adam Ellis. Yeah, I'm joined by Adam Ellis. Um, Adam, a first race uh, crash. Obviously, had a, a tough crash in qualifying practice. Um, first and foremost, how are you feeling? Yeah, same as before to me in May, which, uh, you know, isn't, isn't too good. I thought, I thought it'd be OK. It's felt good all day, and uh, unfortunately, I wasn't, wasn't quite able to to ride the bike comfortably and uh, led to another crash. So, um, yeah, I think I'm going to knock it on the head. 
That's a real shame, mate. Do you feel the crash was as a result of your, your shoulder not being up to strength? Yeah, it was frustrating. Silly mistake yesterday, and uh, yeah, it was. You know, it's it's not good. The, the end of the collarbone has has popped up, and um, yeah, it's been pretty uncomfortable. I haven't got a lot of strength, but yeah, I think. It, it probably didn't help. I didn't particularly feel comfortable on the bike, and it's a shame I couldn't have done a couple of laps, you know, to the, today. Then I would have probably known that it wasn't going to be good. But um, yeah, Tom and Leon now get, get to go in, which is which is good for them. And uh, you know, there's no reason why I should carry on when I, I can't ride properly. No, I'm full credit to you. I appreciate it. it. Must have been so tough. I hope you managed to enjoy a little bit of the atmosphere. I know you're disappointed you didn't get to show people what you're capable of, but uh, all the best for a speedy recovery, mate. Thank you. Yeah, tough times for Adam Ellis. You know, he uh, won the British Championship last year, but um, in his defence this year, prior to it being rained off, he had had a nightmare and uh, really didn't get going at all. So comes here, has a crash yesterday, has another one in his first ride today. So you have to have some sympathy for Adam Ellis because this is, would have been very... Oh, he would have been desperate to race here tonight. Yeah, he'd have been so uh, looking forward to this and uh, building up to it, getting equipment ready. A lot of effort goes into it. As you say, uh, didn't have a great night before the uh, British final was curtailed at Heat 12, but uh, the riders voted and said that, no, as the uh, reigning champion, he should uh, take his place. He was grateful for that, but unfortunately he hasn't been able to take advantage of it. Yeah, his exact words were, I feel very lucky, and, and, and you know, not to be able to take the opportunity tonight is um, just shows you sometimes uh, the sport can be quite cruel to you, but uh, those are the breaks, and he'll bounce back, I'm sure. He's a young, determined character. Won't be long we see before we're seeing the best of Adam Ellis very soon. So guys now just uh, getting the bikes ready for the restagings of uh, heat number three. We're taking our time here with the restaging. Jason uh, Doyle like feeling the full brunt of that first corner, but it looks like he's uh, fired up for the restaging. Uh, he, he doesn't need firing up, but uh, but he is. <laughs> he is fired up. He's a tough boy. He's probably tougher than the bike, actually. There seems to be quite a bit of feverish work going on to straighten things out. Um, doesn't look like he's going to manage to get out on his favoured bike that he started that race on, which is a shame, but uh, hopefully this one will perform uh, very well for him, and if it doesn't, I'm sure the pit crew will stick to the task and make sure they get that bike up and running again. Well, the two minutes isn't on yet. The clock hasn't started the rundown, so possibly they'll keep working on the other one. He'll get out on track with this one, and if there's time and the other one appears, possibly a, a late change of equipment before heat number three gets underway. So we're down to... Well, down to heat number three, second staging, all four riders back in the rerun. Riders beginning to make their way out. Yeah, we are now on two minutes. So um, Jason Doyle has made his way almost up to tape, so he's made the decision he will go with his spare bike. Smart slick there, followed by Anders Thompson. Teammates in Poland, they rode both ride for Gorzhov. The big news recently, of course, is that Smarzlik will leave Gorzhov at the end of the season and move across to Lublin, which is a quite sensational move, and we will see how that works out for the championship leader. But but on other things on his mind here this evening, 18-point lead in the championship. He wants to maintain that at the very least, doesn't he? And so well, here we are then, heat number three then, Bartosz Smarzlik slipping down on the inside. Last-minute adjustments for Andrei Lebedev. Uh, just over a minute to go, so he should make it round. You've got to be at the tapes ready to go before the two minutes runs out, otherwise you will be excluded. Uh, he's going to go the short way round, which is not Technically, he's not actually allowed to do. I'm sure there'll be some not. leniency, but... Yeah, I'd like to think so, but um, he's going to be there in time, making his way out to gate number three then. So, heat number three, the inside is Bartosz Schmarzlik. Alongside is Anders Thompson in blue. In the white helmet, Kamala is Andrei Lebedev. And off the outside is Jason Doyle in yellow. So, plenty of reruns already, Chris. And uh, it could be quite a long yeah. night, but uh, it's going to be an exciting one, that's for sure. So, a couple of interesting first turns already. Have indeed. So, yes, Star Marshall looks like he's getting fairly satisfied with the four riders. Yes, he is. Three lights on now. Thanks for that. We're underway. Once again, Schmarzlik power. 
runners into that first corner, hugging the inside. Thompson's there in second place. Doyle coming through now. Doyle passing them down the back straight. Charges into second place. Shoves Thompson out of the way. Classy move from Doyle. Hard charging move from the Australian rider. Smarzik out in front. Lebedev's in problems at the back. Thompson in third place. But no real surprise to see Smarzik taking the advantage of the inside gate. Roaring out in front. Uh, looking good as well. Jason Doyle, he's got the pace. He's uh, managing to reel him in, particularly on this uh, turns one and two. Getting good traction off that corner every lap. And he really is hanging on to him. One mistake from Smarznik and Doyle would be through. Into the last lap then. Jason Doyle got a lot of pace. He's faster than Smarznik. Here he comes now. Charging down one big left effort. Now swatching back to the inside. Smarznik's going to hang on. Brilliant race there in hit number three. Smarslik having to do all he knew there to hang on out in front, had to have eyes in the back of his head. Jason Doyle, the power and grip and speed he produced through that first and second corner was a sight to behold, almost running into Smarslik down the back straight. But Smarslik, the championship leader, hangs on out in front and picks up his first win of the evening. So three points for him. Second place is Jason Doyle, two points for him. Anders Thompson, third one, and Andre Lebedev's clearly found it tough going and failed to score but uh, encouraging signs there for the Australian but uh, a uh, composed ride by that man out in front yeah showing his composure and uh, showing his intent gets a race win his nearest rivals Madsen Janoski have only managed second places so he extends his lead in this early stage of the meeting cracking start does the right thing keeps the bike pinned right down on the inside he's not going to let anybody up the inside of him but Jason Doyle made a reasonable start wasn't good enough made the smart decision to uh, just allow the riders into the corner and make the cutback and manages to get past uh, Thompson there down the back straight and he chased Marslick for everything he was worth and made a lot of ground up at times yeah, it was a fine effort, but um, uh, just ran out of time, effectively. But uh, there's no doubt they'll be pleased with the speed he had. So, uh, a solid start for both those two riders, Smarslik and Doyle. Smarslik there. Just having a look at the replays, just to see exactly what was going on. He was probably a little concerned that the rider behind him was faster. But nonetheless, he picked up the three points. Heat number four now. And the riders are up at tapes, pretty sharpish. Uh, on the inside will be uh, Freddie Lingard, Mikkel Mikkelsen there in the blue helmet colour. Uh, looking for a big night tonight, talking to some of the Danish representatives over here this weekend. They are very keen to see him go well. Disappointing Speedway of Nations for Denmark, the host nation. They didn't produce quite as much as they would have liked. We've just heard the introduction of Dan Buehling. Wow, what a reception. Here we go then. On the inside is Freddie Lindgren in the red helmet colour. Alongside him is Mikkel Mikkelsen in blue. Max Frick in white comes out of gate three. And Dan Bewley, the fan favourite, goes from the outside gate in the yellow helmet colour. And Dan Bewley, what a night. What a night it could be for him. Yeah, what an event for him. Had a very interesting conversation with Steve Lawson, a guy that's worked with him from the very beginning. He's put a lot of time and effort uh, into Dan and he's sort of passed him on now to uh, to other people to sort of try and sort of finish the job with him but uh, you know he's, he's matured I wouldn't say away from Steve but he's certainly given him the great platform and he said his character doesn't change win or lose his character is exactly the same in the pits. Here we go then heat number four. Green light is on and away we go. Face up sharpie. England's there but beauty. Beauty colour comes from the outside absolutely Listen to the noise. Flies round that first corner. It's deafening sound in the stadium. Absolutely rocketed out of the outside gate. Lingren back in second place, Frick in third, Mickelson at the back. But there's only one rider in this race, and that's Dan Bewley. Look at him go, stretching away out in front. Lingren now powering on in second place. Max Frick holding on to third. What a stunning first corner from Dan Bewley. Yeah, look behind Dan. There's no one there, mate. You're just out front enjoying yourself. Fresh air, and he's just riding the bike so well. He's edge of the dirt. He's not going any further than he needs to. Maximum traction, and pulling away from a classy field. Brilliant stuff. Dan Bewley's going to win in a canter, almost a half the length of the straight. Did all the hard work in the first corner. Crowd on their feet. Absolutely delighted to see the British rider in his opening ride, and that was a stunning performance. The move in the first corner, got away from the outside, absolutely textbook stuff from him. Freddie Lindgren back in second place, but he did look mighty impressive, that young man. He maintains that form, he's going to have a terrific chance of making the first final of his career. Wow. Just out in front. Wow. He 
what a ride that was. That really does lay down a marker. So he wins in style, three points for Bewley. Second place is Freddie Lindgren, two points. Max Frick in third one, and Mikkel Mickelson missing out. Stunning ride, ride of the night so far. Ride of the night so far, he's uh, coming off gate four, was absolutely fantastic. So there's the standings after the first group of races. And we've got plenty of action to come. So, yes, Bartosz Smarzik, Dudek, Jack Holder and Bewley win the uh, opening races of the night. There will be some track rating going on, there, which will be quite extensive, I would suggest. But uh, this first corner from Bewley was uh, out of the top draw. Stunning, stunning. You know, it's uh, opening ride in the biggest speedway event of the calendar. And uh, you've got gate four. It's going to be tough from there. Nobody told Dan Bewley. He's got, a, he's got about uh, a 30-yard lead on the very first lap, first half of a lap. Absolutely fantastic start to come across there this early on in the meeting. Didn't even use the dirt line. He actually made a good enough start just to get across the whole field. And he had so much momentum through the corner. and. As you say, he had a 30-yard lead coming out of turn two on the opening lap, and that itself, it, it was over, really, and truthfully, barring mechanical issues, he was all over from then on, and he just stretched that lead further and further away, and there's no question that this man just loves going fast, that's for sure. Um, uh, he just he just enjoys riding riding the bike. You know, if, if he's not riding his speedway bike, he's riding his motocross bike. He just needs to be racing something. Let's get some more reaction now with Scott Nichols. He's going to be joined by Jason Doyle. Jason Doyle joins me. Jason, tough first and first and foremost, how are you feeling, mate? Yeah, I'll tell you after the meeting, mate. It's a little bit, uh, I'm a bit bruised, but you've got a soldier on. Um, yeah, you don't want that in heat one, but it, I guess the adrenaline's now pumping and we've got to go now for another four heats. Mate, the adrenaline's definitely pumping. You're all over Smarzik there. You must be good with the setup. Yeah, if you're, you're faster than Smarzlik, you know you've got a good setup. So we just uh, spun a little bit from the start, but we, we had to jump on our second bike, which the first one had a bent, bent wheel, the handle grips were off, so it was a little bit not ideal, but then again, sometimes it could be a blessing in disguise. As you say, the second bike was certainly quick, and it is a bit of a chase from there all the way up. It's a, people don't appreciate it. It's a long drag from here out to the track, and when you're under two minutes, that applies a bit more pressure too. Yeah, for the mechanics to run up the hill and try to get the, the back wheel sorted is a bit of a nightmare, but yeah, we, we just went straight to the tape, so we'll just keep moving and, and find the right setup. Well, maybe we put the mechanics in a training camp too, but well done, Jason and keep it up Cheers, and good luck for the rest of the night. Thanks, Scotty. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, I think you could see the experience there. He made that decision. He wasn't going to mess around changing bikes. He just committed to that one and it proved to be the right choice. Ty Wiffenden, they're just getting cleaned up after his first ride of the night. We've seen uh, some pretty entertaining stuff already and if it's an indication of what we're going to see tonight, we're going to be in for a thriller. And uh, the Cardiff uh, Principality Stadium has not disappointed in the first four heats. Dan Bewley will be out again in heat number five. He chose number 13. That gives you heat four, then five. He started from gate four. We'll go from the inside gate in the next race, so he'll be hoping to keep his momentum rolling, but he will come up against Jack Holder, so it could be quite a tussle. Yeah, it will be, and uh, the two young guns, no doubt, are uh, gaining in their experience and going faster and faster. We can see there Jason Doyle just talking to uh, multi-world championship winning Tuna, Peter Johns, he does a great job for a lot of lads. He does indeed. So um, uh, we will wait patiently now for heat number five. So um, uh, not too much longer. So Freddie Lingwin just um, uh, having a chat with his crew, getting a little bit of an idea of what they should be going on. These track grading breaks actually are going to be hugely important tonight. We don't want to see too many holes and ruts appearing so they will possibly take a little bit more time with it yeah there is a lot of uh, a lot of effort going into the track right now they've, they've graded uh, a lot of the dirt that's moved out back down to uh, to cover the inside they're now putting some water on it I, I feel that they will pack it as well they want to try and keep the surface uh, down there on the inside as long as they possibly can so um we can get some more reaction now. Scotty Nichols working hard. He's going to be joined by Chris Holder. Chris Holder, you've had an awesome amount of success here. It's a huge event and the pressures. Obviously, it's hard sometimes to talk to rides about the build-ups and stuff, but 
How is the day building up for you? Did you feel like the demands and the pressures of the fans in the streets, was that something you felt was like a mental kind of bit of a headache in a way? It, it was a little bit of a headache, like just getting from here to the hotel, like you'd run just to get through, because obviously you stop for one, you stop for all, but um, I enjoyed it. I liked all that stuff. It made it, you know, more important and mo you wanted to do more, you know, do well and, uh, and all the rest of it. But yeah, it's tough, but it's, it's the biggest stage. This is it. Cardiff's one of our best ones. and. Um, You'd do anything to be out there racing with these guys and be on the top step. So if you've got to, you know, sign a few autographs and see everybody, no worries. You were so fortunate to be on that top step. Just how amazing was that feeling? Indescribable, man. Indescribable, really. It's uh, insane. It's something that I can't really explain, but when you're there and you know it and you're feeling it, like you've done the parade and feel that energy, and when you're there and they say your name and you've got that trophy and you're going home with it, it's like, you beauty. <laughs> well, maybe little bruv can follow in your footsteps. I'll let you enjoy your night. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Good to hear from Chris. Great to see him about. Riding well in Poland this year. And um, uh, had a wonderful Grand Prix career. Of course, um, the highlight was that World Championship in 2012 where he was outstanding. So heat number five is not too far away now. Two unbeaten riders here. Uh, that man running in fine style in his first ride. Great move in the first corner on two occasions because it was restaged. So here we are then, heat number five. And Bewley will be going from the inside gate. Just having a good look around there, digging around, deciding whether he wants to go from a fresh bit. Not going to do that. So on the inside in red is Dan Bewley. Alongside him is Matze Janowski in blue. Gate number three in white is Jack Holder and Andre Lebedevs will go from the outside, replacing the injured Martin Vasilik. And that's bad luck for Martin Vasilik because he was riding really well. But uh, he'll be back, I'm sure. He'll well be back for Wrocław, which will be at the end of this month the next round of the World Championship. This is round number six of ten here in the Principality tonight. We've got ten rounds this year. We were hoping to go to Australia, but it looks like it's going to be on the calendar for 2023. There's Steve Lawson keeping an eye on his charge and such an instrumental character for Dan Bewley. And uh, when you were talking about that he did all the hard yards, it's almost like he's been sent to finishing school now, isn't it? Yeah, to, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, with the boys out in Poland. Steve has put so much effort into him. He did a fantastic job with him. It was just interesting, quickly going back to what he told me. He said his routine, if he, if he uh, finishes last in the race, he'll come in, he'll clean his goggles. If he wins a race, he could, it doesn't matter who he's just beaten. He comes in, he cleans his goggles. He's just got an absolutely, perfectly level temperament. Yeah, could be very useful at Grand Prix. Here we go then, heat number five. Second ride for these guys and we're underway. Bewley's made a nice start off that inside gate. They charge into the first turn and the other three riders have disappeared off to the safe defence and Bewley is cleared off once again. Bit of water on the track. Here comes Janowski around the outside of Jack Holder. Holder now slipping back into third place with Lebedevs at the back. But Bewley once again showing stunning speed out in front. He's in a class of his own at the early stages of this Grand Prix. Wow! What a start and opening lap from Bewley. In second place is Janowski, but Bewley absolutely jet propelled. Really, he's gone clear. He's actually using the ruts to his advantage. We are seeing them just starting to materialise now, but he's just having a little look back and he can see the gap he's got. He can't afford to get off the throttle around this track. The minute you do that, the ruts appear to get bigger and you can make some big mistakes, but he is looking superb out front. Sensational ride once again from Graham Bewley. He's back in second place. Jack Holder drops his first points of the night. Back in third place. Lebedev's missing out. But wow, the British fans are loving that. Unbeaten out of his first two rides. Fast time as well. Breaks that 54 second barrier. Comes around for a celebration lap. Just listen to this crowd. Wow. Result then. Dan Bewley wins in fine style. Three points for him. Matze Janowski back in second place, two. Jack Holder in third, one point for him this time, and Andre Lebedev's missing out. But who's going to beat Dan Bewley? He has laid the gauntlet down. He is quick and fast, stunningly quick. Yeah, the way he's riding the bike is, as I said, he just loves bike time. All he wants to do is ride his bike. And just look at that start he makes. The bike doesn't lift, just goes forwards. Everybody else goes across the track. The water's just gone down. It's a little bit slippery. But uh, Dan Bewley just keeps the thing absolutely pinned for four laps, enjoying himself. These two tussling away at the back. Look, this is just coming off the first turn. And uh, Jack Holder there on the inside. He's uh, just not managing to get past Janowski, who started solidly enough with a couple of second places.
Yes, he has indeed. So Janowski well and truly in the thick of the action, but uh, had no reply, really had no answers for the speed of the man out in front. So, there we go, heat number six. And uh, the cool, calm, collected Dan Bewley there, just reflecting on his first two rides. And uh, we'll be more than satisfied with that. Can't do better than six points from your first two outings. So the ideal start for him. Not too far away from the semi-finals at this very early stage, so fantastic performance in heats four and five. It's worked out beautifully for him, choosing the number 13 draw. On the inside here in heat number six is Mikkel Mikkelsen in red. Bartosz Smarslik, winner first time out, blue in gate number two. Patrick Dudek, also a winner first time out in white. And Leon Madsen will go from the outside in the yellow helmet colour. And the two Polish boys here in the middle two starts here could be quite a tussle. Mikkel Mikkelsen will be looking to get his Grand Prix underway after failing to score first time. Yeah, competitive, very competitive looking race this. And uh, you've got to say that Mikkelsen can make some quick starts. He's got probably got the advantage off gate one as well. We've just seen Dan Bewley rock it away from gate one. Uh, very, very competitive though. Leon Madsen outside gate, but we know how quick he can be off the start. Yeah, the performance, the performance from Leon Madsen uh, in 2019 was stunning. He, uh, he went through the card and he really was in fine form that year. It was only Smarslik on gate number two that pipped him to the World Championship by two points in the end. It really did get very tight indeed as we came to the conclusion in Torrance. So here we go then, heat number six. Great line up here once again. Green light comes on now. Oh, a little bit of a twitch on the inside for Mickelson, but he's got there. No, he hasn't. It's Madsen once again who comes charging across, but he's run too wide. That opens the door for his compatriot, Mickelson, and the two Danes are battling out in front. Smarsley back in third place, and Dudek is relegated to the back, but Smarsley's now getting amongst it, hugging that inside line. Smarsley beginning to put the pressure on. He's through in the second place. Madsen once again running too wide in turns one and two, finding it difficult there. Mickelson from the inside gate, out in front. Smarsley works working overtime in second place, and Dudek, who won in fine style, finds himself at the back. Yeah, too many mistakes for Madsen. He's put himself in good positions from the start, hasn't made the right choices to pop the bike around the first turn where it needs to be, and he's allowed all of the opposition up the inside of him. Mickelson, race settling down now. A couple of big points for Schmarslik. Super right for Mikkel Mickelson. He gets his Grand Prix underway now. Failed to score, but he wins his second outing in fine style, beating Schmarslik. Marslik once again just doing enough really, didn't have the pace to stay with him, Mickelson was able to pull away and Smarslik must be a little concerned about that, had, uh, had Jason Doyle all over him like a rash in his first ride and then didn't have any answers to Mickelson but fair play to Mikkel Mickelson, he had a disappointing opening ride but has shown great character there by winning heat number six, three points for him, Smarslik back in second place two, Leon Madsen in third, one point for him and Dudek. This is out in his second outing, but it's great to see a rider bouncing back like that. Never easy not uh, scoring in your opening ride. No, it isn't, and they show real character there to uh, hit the front on the first lap. Again, it's uh, Madsen that makes a decent effort from gate four, lets the bike run across the corner. I don't think he wanted it to. I just think that uh, Mickelson just forced him into the corner. Madsen probably just sits back a little bit on the seat just at this point here. Now he runs across. And uh, Mickelson with a good ride, but Smarslik, as you say, Kelvin, is picking up the points, but he hasn't got the speed, which is unusual. Yeah, we see him normally really chase down people out in front, but um, he rode nicely here, and he's got five points. It's not, it's not a disaster, far from it, but uh, as I say, we are accustomed to seeing the World Championship leader have uh, stunning speed. He's yet to find it tonight, but once again, he's using all his experience, and uh, he's uh, picking up points at uh, the right time. So heat number seven, and, uh, we will see uh, the riders coming to tapes now. The first time we'll see Tom Brennan. Tom Brennan will come in for Adam Ellis here. So a great moment for the young British rider. So the inside gate is with Anders Thompson in red. Freddie Lingren alongside him in blue gate two. Tom Brennan will come in for Adam Ellis. He'll be in the white helmet color gate three. And Pavel Szafelski from Poland will go from the outside in yellow. And a bit of practice for Tom Brennan for tomorrow's SGP2, but he won't see this as practice. He will be trying to win. He is a born racer. He is indeed, and uh, this track will not hold any fears for Tom. He is accustomed to riding on tight British tracks and um, uh, maybe with a few ruts and bumps here and there, so no doubt that he'll be relishing the challenge and the opportunity. Are you nervous? Of course he will be. But um, uh, a great opportunity for the youngster who is moving in the right direction. Freddie Lindgren there, just settling down. Anders Thompson on the inside. 
Sanders, who picked up uh, one point in his first ride. He'll be looking to take advantage of that inside gate if he can. Freddie Lingren alongside him. So Star Marshall looks like he's happy. Yes, he is. He walks away. Very nice time. Takes her up. Freddie Lingren made a great jump. Brilliant jump from Lingren. Chapelski's there alongside him. Chapelski around the outside. Freddie Lingren's a tough man to overtake. Problems there for Anders Thompson. He's packed up and he's not in the race. Tom Brennan into third place. But, you know, with Freddie Lingren, if he gets himself in a position of strength, he's not going to let it up easily. And Freddie, who loves riding here, he has a terrific record of riding in the UK, and he looks very comfortable and quick out in front. Chapelski back in second place, and Brennan in third on the pace. Yeah, give Frederick Lindgren a 50-50 situation, and he's going to make it his. He did that on the first lap. Uh, Chapelski with a decent start and first turn around the outside, but it does seem that the riders aren't just finding that little bit of extra traction they need to get it down the back straight and into turn three. Here we go then. One more corner for fast Freddie Lindgren, living up to his nickname here in fine style. We saw a bit of a debrief in the pits earlier on, and uh, it seems to have played huge dividends because he was uh, really, really quick there and delighted to pick up his first win of the evening. So Freddie Lindgren. Looking good there in heat number seven, winning comfortably. Anders Thompson had some issues, which is just be disappointing for the Danish rider. He fell there this time. The result then, Freddie Lingwin, three points. Fabio Chapelski, a better ride from him, two points in second place. Tom Brennan picks up his first point of the evening, and that was good in third place. And Anders Thompson, unfortunately, had some mechanical issues. But for Fast Freddie, an experienced rider, of course, certainly showed all of it there. Yeah, he did, and... Uh... A great start because just he looks down there, he just keeps his weight over the front of the bike, doesn't want the front wheel in the air. Uh, textbook start, uh, shuts the door when he knows that Chapelski's having a little look, as I said, give uh, Freddie Lindgren a 50 50 situation and he will not back out of it. So uh, it takes him on to five points. Decent start to tonight's meeting for Freddie. Yeah, rock solid from Freddie Lindgren. He'll be chuffed with that. You know, Freddie is a hard worker, he just keeps his head down, and he'll keep building on that. Great base to build from for the remainder of his qualifying heats. So now we are coming to the conclusion of this second block of races where everybody would have completed two rides uh, in the, after heat number eight. And uh, another great looking lineup here where it's effectively Australia against Great Britain with two Brits and two Australians. Heat number eight then, we will see uh, Ty Woffenden going from that inside gate. And Wolfenden, who picked up one point in his first row, will be looking to improve upon that now. So he's on the inside in red. Robert Lambert alongside him in blue. Gate number two. Gate number three in white is Jason Jordan. And on the outside is Max Frick in the yellow helmet colour. And uh, this could be quite a tear up here because Doyle certainly is fired up. Wolfenden will be looking for big points this time. Yes, he will. And uh, just the one point on his opening ride off gate four. He's got the inside gate this time. Let's see what he can do with it. Yeah, we've seen that working quite well, and you must believe when they were looking at the program, they will be looking and focusing on the inside gate and trying to take advantage. Not absolutely fully fit after that nasty training accident in Denmark. So it's the back, his back just a little bit of a twinge there, but uh, I'm sure once this uh, adrenaline in is underway, I shouldn't think it will present too much of a problem. Robert Lambert also just picked up one point in his first ride, so he'll be keen to get amongst the big points this time. Heat number eight then, the conclusion of the second block of races. The ride is on and we're off and running. And, uh, it's Jason Doyle, comes out of gate number three, smashing start from the Australian. Wolfenden comes through in second place and Frick has come around the outside of Robert Lambert and Lambert is relegated to the back. Jason Doyle clearly fired up away out in front. Here comes Wolfenden, really working the bike hard, chasing the Australian out in front, but Doyle's ridden nicely there. Good line, keeping his wheels, keeping his composure. He's going to have to, though, because Wolfenden is really trying to hunt him down. Half a mistake from Wolfenden, and there's some breathing space now for Doyle in front. Yeah, Doyle's just found himself a little bit of fresh air, taking the pressure off, really working the bike hard. You can see the bike pulling at the end of the straight, and uh, you've got to work hard then to get into the corner. You don't want to be collecting any of those ruts, but Ty Wolfenden, he's given chase, but he's just now losing a little bit of ground. Into the last corner then, Jason Doyle working overtime. Frick's going to have a one last go with Wolfenden in second place, with Wolfenden a little untidy through the last corner, but hangs on for second place with Frick coming on really hard and Lambert disappointingly at the back. But gate number three in that first corner from the former world champion, Jason Doyle, that was a great effort. And another rider that's looking very competitive tonight, 
when a win and a second place after that nasty looking fall in the original stages of his first outing a great way to uh, reply so for Doyle he's, um, uh, he's in the mix tonight yeah, riding very well, particularly, as you say, after going down quite heavily. He said he was a little uncomfortable in his interview, but uh, picking up a fantastic win from gate three, which statistically is the worst gate. There's not too much to choose between one, two and four, uh, one being the most advantageous, but uh, three statistically not so good. But Jason Doyle really pulled clear on the way to the corner, and uh, that made the race a whole lot easier for him. We can see the tussle at the back here. Robert Lambert just trying to get up the inside of Max Frick. Max Frick now shuts that door and no way through for Robert Lambert. But uh, Ty Woofenden giving chase. You can see there, little mistake, front wheel up in the air. He's got the wheel over the kerb. Uh, and uh, congratulates Jason Doyle on that win. A fine win it was. It was a fine win and uh, just a little bit of a panic station for Woofenden coming out of the last corner, but he hung on. So um, uh, he moves on to three points after two outings, but for Dan Bewley, who's unbeaten after two rides, he sits on top of the pile. So the result then of heat number eight is Jason Doyle with three points, Ty Woofenden in second place two, Max Frick in uh, third place, one point for him, and Robert Lambert back in fourth place fails to score. There's the standings after two rides each, six points for Bewley, Bartosz Schmarslik five, Lindgren five, Doyle five, and Jack Holder four. But uh, this is warming up very nicely indeed. Heat number nine, not too far away. Yeah, so we've seen some super speedway already. We've got uh, the dynamite speed of Dan Bewley, but I've got to say one or two other riders, Chris, have uh, certainly responded very nicely in the speed from Lingren and Doyle. And Barca Smarsling, not the fastest rider out there, but doing the job he needs to. Yeah, as you say, solid points from uh, Doyle, Lindgren and Smarslik, but just not quick. He's not able to take the race to anybody. He literally is hanging on to his positions after decent starts. Uh, in his second one, he did have to battle through, but then just couldn't take the charge uh, to find the lead. But uh, extensive track grading going on now. Interesting to see that they put the water down first before they drag the dirt over, which suggests to me that they want to actually pack that dirt back down saw briefly there the uh, gate stats after the first eight races and uh, no surprise to see the inside gate working well but uh, we'll keep an eye on that through the evening because that will be of interest to of us all and uh, as we come to the conclusions of the qualifying races and the all important picks for the semi-final and then of course ultimately the grand final itself and uh, furious work going on in these pit areas now this is when these boys really do earn their money tweaks to the carburetor, clutches being cooled, and, uh, gear ratios being changed, and uh, wheels being swapped around for fresh tyres. It really is all action in the pits. And, uh, Bewley there, just having a fresh tyre fitted in there. You can have a new tyre every race if you want, but generally the guys do two races. They actually do it, use it one way, and then swap it around to get the fresh edge for their second rider. There's the carburetor exposed with the air filter on top. So we will um, uh, get some more reaction now with Scotty Nichols. He's going to be joined by Chris Bomber Harris. Yeah, I've got the bomber, Chris Harris, with me. Chris, did you get to see a little bit of practice yesterday? A little bit, yeah. I seen it was chopping up a little bit. I thought, oh, I wish I was out there, but no, it was, uh, yeah, it was interesting. I guess that brought the memories back of 07 then. It was pretty choppy that night. Oh, it was very choppy, as you know. But uh, yeah, it was, um, it was fun back then, but hopefully the boys can... Uh, do, do us all out there tonight. What are you making the race out there tonight? You said you'd love to be out there. Of course we'd all love to be out there, but um, yeah, the boys are putting on a good show and uh, Dan's looking very quick, so uh, I think the money might be on him tonight. And how was the legends tonight last night? It was good. Tom, I got back to the hotel after Oxford, but yeah, we had a, had a few cokes and we got back. Good stuff. Well, enjoy the rest of your night. Good talk to you, Chris. Hey, buddy. Yeah, good to see Chris here. What a stunning performance it was back 15 years ago now in 2007 when he broke the heart of Greg Hancock on that run to the line. It was an outstanding performance. Probably many people's highlight of the 20 years that we've enjoyed here in the Principality. Yeah, I was fortunate not to be working that night. It was one of the, uh, it was the only time I've actually been sat in the grandstand and um, I became a super fan for a few moments when he won that final and made that move. I, I could see it coming and I, and yeah. I just knew it was going to happen. Yeah, it was a fabulous moment and a little unfortunate for him that the British Grand Prix, uh, the British final was uh, curtailed. But um, uh, he'll have another chance a little later on. So 
So here we are now. Every rider has completed two rides, and uh, track, track, track rating continuing is continuing. But there'll be uh, some more reaction with Scotty Nichols. He's going to uh, hook up with Dan Bewley. Dan Bewley joins me. Dan, you came and watched her as a spectator, probably having a few beers and a walkabout, and now you're uh, tearing her apart in 2022. Yeah, I don't think I had any beers the first time I came. I was too young, but... Um, My bad, sorry. No, but, uh, yeah, it's crazy. Looking back, it's not that long ago, and, uh, you know, we got off to, off to a dream start so far, but uh, it's a long night ahead of us. So, did you make many changes between your first two races? Obviously, you're back-to-back -back off polar opposite gates, though. Yeah, nothing, not even a tear off. Just everything was the same. So uh, just new fuel and that was it. But um, no, I, I felt good and uh, the boys did a good job with the bike and uh, yeah, just keep it up. Well, you're in a different postcode and it's always a nice feeling when you don't use those tear offs up. So good luck for the rest of the night, mate. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, no surprise, actually. I spoke to Dan Bewley a little while ago. He actually worked with me on a broadcast back in the UK at the Bellevue, and he said he doesn't like changing the bike too much. He said, tends to keep it fairly simple, and he uh, quite clearly did that in his first In this day ride. and age, that's quite refreshing. It is. Because I, 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 in the UK, I hear riders coming in from every single race, win or lose, want to change something. That does seem to be the way of things these days. So heat number nine now. And uh, we're on with the action once again. On the inside is Leon Madsen in the red helmet colour. Max Vick alongside him in gate number two in blue. Matej Janowski will come out of gate number three in white. And off the outside this time will be Anders Thompson, who needs to get underway here. He's under pressure, Anders Thompson. A fine winner, of course, in Gorjov, but uh, really hasn't got going at all tonight. He's just got one point from two outings. He retired last time, so a little bit of pressure on... Anders Thompson, who uh, made such a stunning move in the championship on 49 World Championship points as it comes into tonight. So here we are, plenty of gardening going on on the start line as they um, prepare themselves for the freshly prepared track. Of course, Janowski will get that freshly prepared track every time we'll go from gate number three. And if you watch Jason Dorr when he won from gate number three, he'll be thinking, well, it is possible from there. Yeah, we've just had a track grade, so a lot of the dirt has actually been pulled over those ruts and covered them up. We go then, heat number nine. All movement from Janowski. Takes her up. Madsen's made a great start on the inside. Frick chops to the inside. So Janowski went very wide there and it didn't quite pay off for him, but Leon Madsen now has retained the lead after making really good starts earlier. Janowski in trouble with uh, Anders Thompson now beginning to put him under a lot of pressure, but for Leon Madsen, I'll tell you what, he's on a bucking Bronco. The bike's fast, but by golly, he's having to hang on to it. He's out in front. Frick's charging hard in second place. Janowski has settled in third with Thompson at the back. Yeah, Madsen set to double his points haul here. It's a big race for him. We'll take him on to six points if he can hang on to this. As you say, Kelvin, bike looks difficult to ride. He's only a small fella, but uh, we know he's not always 100% fit. Carries a lot of injuries all of the time, but at the moment, out front. Looking good out in front. Anders Thompson, his woes continue with bike problems. But for Leon Madsen, his first win of the night. Man who's in second place in the World Championship, and all of a sudden, six points after three outings. That's much more like it from the former world number two. Frick coming through in second place, and Janowski just finding it a little problematic back in third. And it's not the night that uh, Anders Thompson was looking for, but for Leon Madsen, all of a sudden, the confidence will be sky high at pace. He had to hang on to his motorbike once or twice, a little out of shape. Three points for Madsen, then out in front. Max Frick coming through in second place, two points for him. That's a Janowski back in third one, and Anders Thompson, one point after three rides. He's under a lot of pressure. Yeah, Madsen will be happy with that. As you say, he's had the pace all night, he's had the starts all night, but he's just made too many mistakes. And uh, he didn't make the mistakes there, managed to keep himself in front, coming from the inside. Just had a fresh track grade as well, so the dirt's been brought down, gave him every single opportunity. Uh, Janowski, a little bit impatient at the start, had a couple of nibbles, doesn't make the start. Referee, in my opinion, quite rightly letting it go, but the bike on uh, Madsen there, just lifting, launching him down the straight. Uh, no real big mistakes here, but he does look a little bit uncomfortable, and uh, that's only gonna get worse as the track deteriorates through the night. Yep, he did well, but he does need to get his nose in front, but you're right, he has made a couple of mistakes, but uh, six points from three outings, he's in the chase for the semi-finals, that's for sure. Number 10 coming up for you very shortly now. Riders are already at tapes. And, um, uh, we'll see the uh, 
two Australians here and Jason Doyle and Jack Holder going from the two inside gates. So plenty of gardening going on once again. Ruts on the starts are problematic at the temporary tracks. In the inside in red is Jason Doyle. And uh, gate number two is Jack Holder in blue. Freddie Lingwin will come out of gate number three in white. And Patrick Dudek will come out of gate number four in yellow. And Dudek needs to pick it up again now. Stunning opening ride, but then failed to score second time. So he's up against two hard charges, two Aussies on the inside who will be very keen to get out in front. So Dudek will need to produce something pretty special from gate four. Yes, he will, yeah. He uh, needs the points here, two points from his first two rides, as you say, and uh, he's got hard-charging Frederick Lindgren in gate three, which hasn't been as big a disaster as it uh, can be. <laughs> no, Freddie won't give him too much room, that's for sure. Um, uh, a firm rider, I think that may be a slight understatement, but a firm rider nonetheless, and he was a very impressive winner last time out fast, Freddie. This is going to be an entertaining race. You just sense it. There's some hard charges in this one. Doyle on the inside, he doesn't give an inch. Nor does Freddie Dudek, a class act as well. So settling down then, we've got heat number 10. Bart Marshall a little bit concerned, now he's happy. Walks away, green light comes on. And away we go. Holder's made a great start from gate number two. That's a smashing start from the youngster Dudek, roaring around the outside. What a move from Dudek. Brilliant stuff from him. He was a little untidy, but he got the grip. Lingwin in trouble on the entrance to turn three with Doyle coming through into third place. For Dudek, great first corner. Jack Holder in second place, charging hard. Nearly runs in the back of Dudek. Down the back straight once again. They've cleared off from Doyle. Doyle going into turn three, finding loads of grip. For Dudek beginning to put away. This is a good response from the Polish fan. It is a tremendous charge around that first turn around the outside just taking advantage of being in the dirt line uh, right from the get-go and riding out wide just on the edge of the dirt generating plenty of speed it's been a battle at the back with Doyle and Lingram but it seems like Doyle's just got the better of that one as indeed Jack Holder just getting a little out of shape this is a nice ride from Dudek after inexplicably failing to score last time but he's got his Grand Prix right back on track now moves on to six points from these three outings and he'll be chuffed to bits about that solid ride from Holder back in second place and Doyle well he won't be too disappointed he'll move on to six points as well it's going to get awfully tight for the semi-finals you suggest Doyle's actually got a problem I think he picked up a puncher there late on in the race did well to hang on in truth struggling to get the bike back to the pits three points for Dudek out in front Jack Holder in second place two for him Jason Doyle there struggling with a puncher one point for him and Freddie Lingwood misses out now you can clearly see with uh, Doyle just having problems with no air in the rear tyre not ideal but for that man Patrick Dudek this was a great first turn yeah it's a superb first turn for Patrick Dudek Jack Holder initially makes a good getaway from gate two pulls uh, clear of the pack but uh, Dudek just realises he's got a lot more traction around the outside and we can see Freddie Lindgren there big mistake from him that cost him third place on the first lap and he charged Jason Doyle down, couldn't do anything about it, but uh, there we see Jack Holder. He got close a couple of times to the back of Dudek, and a few mistakes. The bikes are now just lifting quite a bit. We're seeing a few berms, a few ruts, and uh, the track will deteriorate uh, continually. It's, it's tough out there for the lads, but uh, we're putting on a good show at the moment. Yeah, they're going to have to have their wits about them this evening, that's for sure. So. Moving swiftly on, Patrick Dudek just uh, gathering his thoughts after a smashing ride and um, really getting his act together there. You can see his point scores, 3-0-3, three, three, six points from three outings. That's not too bad at all. He'll be uh, pretty pleased with that. Heat number 11 then. Boys are already at the tapes, getting themselves prepared. As I say, they will spend time here because the ruts do develop quite quickly. On the inside is Robert Lambert in red. Andre Lebedevs will come out of gate number two in blue. Pavel Shapelsky out of gate number three in white. And Mikkel Mikkelsen, who had a fine win last time, will go from gate number four. And it does look, Chris, that that run round that first turn, if you get it right, it really can benefit you big time. Yeah, the dirt line is now just built up enough. It's now giving you the run down the back straight that we hadn't had up until the last couple of races. But uh, if you can stick with it and nobody shuts the door on you, you've got a chance getting into turn three. And we've seen that on a, a couple of occasions already. So Mick or Mickelson. You do actually have an option as well. If you miss the start, you can then sort of chop back to the inside and take your chances coming out of turn number two but i think we saw would... that from jason doyle earlier just timed his cutback perfectly just got out of the throttle realized he wasn't going to get around them and uh, perfect uh, perfect decision from him there we are then so here we go robert lambert needs points here he 
He's on the inside gate. He's looking very keen to get on with the action. So heat number 11. Green lights on. Takes her up. Lambert's made a good start. Got to the first turn. Mickelson, though, round that outside. That run there. Terrific. Andre Lebedev's now coming through in the second place. Robert Lambert just a little untidy there. That was hard news for him, but he's holding that inside. Putting pressure on. Coming on strong, but Mickelson looking good out in front. Failed to score first time, but bounced back with a stunning win last time out. And got to say, he's looking strong out in front. He's chopping up out there. It's tough. Riders really having to hang on to the equipment. Chapelski at the back. The Mickelson, the Danish rider out in front. Riding really nicely. Picking the route, picking the line, looking good. Yeah, he's just letting the bike float over the bumps going into the turns. You've got to, you've got to be a little bit light on the bike. You don't want it to control you. You've just got to let it do its thing. And uh, remained in control. He's looking good. Lebedev's, he's got his steel shoe dangling behind him. This is really not the track uh, to have that happen to you, I'm afraid. Out of the last turn there, Mickelson wins in fine style. Andre Lebedev's picks up points here. Uh, despite the fact that he's got his steel shoe hanging off, and as you rightly say, Chris, very uncomfortable there, but he did a grind, fine job. He didn't seem to slow down too much. Uh, Robert Lambert back in third place. He was looking for a little bit more there, but he was twitching on the start line there. Possibly cost him. That man there, that run around that first corner, though, on the outside, no question is playing big dividends. Three points for Mickelson out in front. Andre Lebedev's two points for him. Better, better from the Latvian. Robert Lambert back in third place, and Chapelski missing out. But uh, I must say that uh, Mickelson moving on to six points now. He'll be feeling much happier about things now because what's scoring in your opening ride here in the Principality is far from ideal, and he's come back strong. He has come back strong. He's uh, making good starts. He made use of that dirt line. The dirt line's strong around the middle of the corner. It can really shoot you onto the straight. And if you use it successfully, then you're going to come out in front. And he makes a decent start, good enough now to take advantage of that run. Edge of the dirt, didn't go any further than he had to. Unfortunately for Lambert, looked like he was going to get something out of this, but Lebedev's charges through on the first lap. And uh, Robert Lambert simply just does not have an answer. No, it's, uh, it's a tough night for Robert Lambert. Just two points and three outings. Going to have to win his last two if he's going to make the semi-finals. He does get a warning. We're now being confirmed by the movement on the inside gate. So that will carry through for the rest of the evening. So um, uh, you can see the reaction there in the pit for Nico Mickelson. And uh, calmly just reflecting on that fine win last time out in heat number 11. But heat number 12. And we've got uh, two, three British riders here with Leon Flink coming out for the first time. Dan Bewley on the inside in red then. Alongside him is a three-time former world champion, Ty Wolfenden in blue. Bartosz Schmarz at the championship leader coming out of gate number three in white. And Leon Flink coming off the outside gate in yellow. And I tell you what, it doesn't get much tougher than this for Leon Flink, does it really? No, not an easy one to come into. <laughs> Um, I have actually been hearing that Dan Bewley has been spending a lot of his time talking to Darcy Ward of late, so uh, it certainly seems to have worked for him. It's not holding him back any, is it? And uh, Darcy Ward, certainly one of the most spectacular riders ever, and uh, produced some stunning displays on the Grand Prix stage. We wish you all the very best, Darcy, if you're watching Down Under. We miss you dearly. So heat number 12, indeed. and uh, we will see uh, the completion of the third block of races. Every rider will have then have had three outings. As I say, Bartos smiles at going along nicely, but not uh, the quickest rider on show. It's going to have to be quick here, because Dan Bewley has been so stunningly fast. And um, if he gets away, he's going to be a hard man to pick back. Wolfenden, I don't think, quite at his best so far tonight, Chris. No, he needs points. Uh, you don't know just how much that lower back injury is causing him grief. Um, he says that it hurts most from the start. Here we are, then. Number 12, and we're up and running. And, uh, Dan Bewley gets a war. What a move from Smarslick that is. That run round that first corner really is paying huge dividends. And the championship leader looks good out in front. Bewley in second place, whooping and charging hard. Back in third, and young Leon Flint on his debut in the Grand Prix, whooping and out of shape, big time there. And really loses all his momentum, has slipped way back in third place. But Arthur Smarslick out in front, going to lower the colours of Dan Beauty for the first time. No disappointment, really, because he'll still move on to eight points. But Arthur Smarslick meaning business this time. Yeah, we can see what's taken him to two world championships. He hasn't had the speed all night. Now he leads uh, Dan Bewley. I don't think Dan really felt he was going to risk taking the chase to him at the moment, but Smarslick has got the speed now. He has indeed, winding it on in style. 
absolutely textbook ride from the championship leader. Schmalzig wins in fine style. Beauty coming through solidly in second place with Wuffenden. Well, I've got to say, we'll be looking for more. It's not been the night that the former champion was looking for so far. Just picking up another third place and Leon Flynn at the back. But all of a sudden, this man, you can never count him out. They've obviously put their heads together in the pits and they've come up with a formula and all of a sudden the speed returns. Bartosz Schmalzlik flying out in front, three points for him. Dan Beauty back in second place, two. Ty Wuffenden in third place, disappointing for him. One point just moves on to three points after three outs. Schmalzlik now on eight, Beauty on eight. Miko Mikkelsen's on six, Patrick Dudek on six, Jack Holder on six, Leon Madsen on six. This meeting really warming up wonderfully well. So we have seen some superb stuff, but Bartosz Schmalzlik all of a sudden returning to fabulous form there. Solid start, but all of a sudden producing the speed that we've become accustomed to seeing. Yeah, we've got Dan Bewley on the inside. It looks like he's made a, a pretty good start. He's run clear there, but uh, Schmalzlik has been watching the monitors, been watching every race. He knew where the speed was and where the grip was. Just got himself there, just ahead of Ty Wuffenden. Ty not able to uh, get there early enough to put the charge and move Schmalzlik over too far, and that just gave him the perfect run. Dan Bewley, got to say, I think he'll just be happy with those two points. Moves him on to eight. Fantastic start for him. Yeah, absolutely right. So uh, Schmalzlik and Bewley on eight points, leading in, uh, from the front after three rides. So fine work, and uh, there's the pit. There's Papa Schmalzlik, just um, uh, very calmly going about their business. And uh, so Schmalzlik, you know, uh, he, did, he did say in the press this week that he puts his uh, card of success down to the fact that he, he grew up as a kid riding a, a similar sized small track that his uh, father Pavel had built for him. And uh, that's definitely paying dividends for him. Uh, you can see he was working there. He's got a little bit of a sweat on. It is uh, hot and sticky, of course. We're having a heat wave in the UK and it's hot in the stadium tonight. So there's no doubt that um, uh, it will be a tough night for all concerned. So. Um, uh, 12 races completed. We are rapidly approaching the midway point in this Grand Prix. Thoroughly enjoying it. I hope you are at home as well. We're delighted to be back here for the... So let's get down to Scotty Nichols now. Yeah, I'm down on the infield, obviously. Ruts is the talk of the day, really. Um, the ruts at the start line, as we know, always get deep in these indoor ones. We've just behind me, you can see here, I spoke to Phil Morris, the race director, and they're trying to scratch the edge off the ruts. It's a problem with these indoor tracks. It's very difficult to get a temporary track in that will withstand all this racing. But this is what the riders are going to have to deal with. And it's probably not very clear on TV, which highlights how difficult it is for the riders. It's actually really difficult to, to pinpoint the ruts. It's almost like you're riding in the dark a little bit. As you see, the tractor just went across there, just filled all those holes in with loose material. So setup is going to be key. The ride's going to opt to possibly race a wider line, but there's always going to be a brave soul just going to try and plow through those ruts on the inside. So uh, just one of the headaches that the GP boys got to deal with in this, in this fantastic stadium, but that makes their life difficult. Thanks very much, Scott, giving us some real insight there on what track conditions are all about and the challenges that uh, are presented to the uh, gladiators that are doing the stuff out on track. As I say, these track grading brakes are going to be crucial to the night to keep this under control. They've got wonderful equipment, actually, and they do seem to be able to pack it back in as best they can. But there's no doubt that you're going to have to have your wits about you tonight. Yeah, particularly after the track grades, because uh, although it does take the edge off some of the ruts, it also covers them up, as Scott said. And uh, the roughest part of the track is no doubt around the inside that's had the most laps done on it. Uh, the smoothest part will be around the outside, but that's where the dirt builds up. So you've got to have a bike set up that makes you comfortable to use it. So there we are then, wonderful atmosphere in the stadium. It really is uh, so, such a privilege to be back. I'm delighted to be here. I'm sure, Chris, you are as well. That's and uh, it is uh, great. You can hardly hear yourself think, but um, uh, no complaints there. Wuffenden, I think, there, just we saw a shot of him in the pit bay. He doesn't look comfortable to me. No, not at all. And uh, I've got to say that uh, clearly still feeling the effects of that uh, 
accident that he sustained in uh, Denmark. So, and these track conditions are probably far from ideal, actually, where the bikes are really pulling your arms out. So he is uh, up against it, and he is, well, both Robert Lambert and Ty Wolfenden are on um, three points for Ty Wolfenden at this stage, and just two points for Robert Lambert. So to make the semi-finals, they really are under pressure. I would suggest for Wolfenden, two wins, really, to be absolutely certain, nine points. But I just suggest tonight, with the way it's working out, it's going to be a really, really tight-knit affair when we come to the conclusion of the 20 heat qualifying heats. You really don't want to be throwing points away now with just two qualifiers to come. This is just sensational in here. Yeah, what, a, what an atmosphere. All the uh, lights are on on phones, dancing around in the stadium. It's just fantastic. Yeah, British fans doing a uh, fine job of making this atmosphere perfect. Uh, so let's um, uh, just take five seconds and we will reflect on what we've seen so far. a uh, short montage of what we've seen so far this evening which has been spectacular uh, to say the least i think actually i'm looking at the scores wolfenden i believe is on four points not on three so he had a second place in his second outing and uh, so still an opportunity for him if he can get his nose in front and dictate that will be a much much happier place to be for him not having to battle away through the dirt no absolutely he needs to get himself some fresh air he needs to be in front he needs to be able to ride where he wants to ride because as you said uh, from those shots he looks uncomfortable he said that the only real pain he got was from the start but uh, i've got to say those pictures told a slightly different story i think there's some general pain going on there yeah he's in discomfort no doubt about that so riders have come forward heat 13 not too far away now and um, uh, once again, some uh, good work being done on this track. And uh, this is crunch time now tonight with the waves working out. We've got two riders on eight points, Smarslik and Bewley. They're going along very nicely. Mikkel Mikkelsen has turned his night around, moving on the six, and Dudek doing exactly the same as a carbon copy, two wins and a zero. Tom Brennan coming out here as well, because Adam Ellis is not fit to take the rides tonight. So another opportunity for the under-21 rider. He'll be here tomorrow in the STP2 Grand Prix. Second round of that series. Matthias Sienjak leading the way with a stunning move in the final in Prague. Looking forward to that. Don't miss it. I'll tell you what, Kelvin, freshly prepped track. Tom Brennan off the inside gate. If he made the start here, we could lose the roof of this place. Yeah would be uh, a fabulous moment for him, the highlight of his career, I would suggest. And as you said earlier on, it'd be a nice little warm-up for tomorrow. Oh, so it's, um, a, it's a lovely little bit of race practice. Indeed it is. So Janowski's out here looking for more points. He's on five. And um, probably needs a win to really settle him down nicely. Hasn't won a race so far. Two second places in the third for the rider who's in fourth place in the World Championship coming into round number six here in the Principality Stadium tonight. So, yeah, riders now all up at tapes. So on the inside here in heat number 13 is Tom Brennan in red. Jason Doyle alongside him in blue, gate two. Mikkel Mickelson flying, coming out of gate number three in white. And Matzo Janowski goes from the outside in yellow. And uh, I've got to say, yeah, great opportunity for Tom Brennan, but probably just going to have to hang on to his nerves here a wee bit because he know the opportunity that presents itself, but he's got to actually then execute it. Yeah, he has, and he's, he's going to have one eye on tomorrow. That's his... Uh, his big prize, really, one that he wants to go out and do well for in front of the British fans. Of course he does. And um, uh, he won the Speedway of Nations last year, of course, in Manchester when Britain came through in flying colours. So uh, he's tasted glory, he's tasted a big occasion. So uh, a rider that is growing in stature and experience every year. So Janowski there, settling down on gate number four. Riders coming forward. 
Nico Mickelson just taking his time, a little bit of a clutch adjustment there. The boys do that because the clutch gets hot fast. Here we go then. Heat number 13. Third ride. Third ride now for these guys, and away we go. They always made a great start from gate number two. The Australian fires himself to the front. Janowski's there on the outside. Janowski coming on strong. The doors lifting. That kills his speed. He goes from first to last. Mickelson cleans him up going into turn three. Heavy fall for Doyle. Red lights are on. Oh, Messi back straight there. Doyle was in a good position, but that lift down the back straight just hurt him, killed his momentum, and he was very vulnerable going into turn three. Got to see that again, really. There was contact. Yeah, definite contact. The referee's now got to make his decision. Was Jason Doyle coming back across, or did he get collected? Um, well, I don't think Mickelson had too many choices, really. He no, had he a was rider. Committed. <laughs> well, yeah, but um, he had, you know, Doyle was out of control, really. And uh, it will be a, a difficult decision for the referee here. Somebody has to go. It's not the first corner. Can't put them all back here. Concern for Doyle. He landed heavily. Second time of the night. He's been enjoying a good Grand Prix as well. So um, he'll be disappointed, of course, if he's thrown out of the race. Um, uh, but no doubt that uh, Mickelson clipped him on uh, the entrance to turn number three, but possibly didn't have too many choices. Quite narrow going into turn three. Yeah, Mick Mickelson had, had built up a lot of speed. You know, he had no, uh, no real decision to make he had to keep the throttle on he had to keep going got a gut instinct on it i, I fancy doyle's gonna with get thrown it, out here yeah i think he might without seeing it again but now we'll get the opportunity great start in blue there from jason doyle coming from gate two there's the first mistake there's the second mistake that's where he loses momentum and you can see mickelson makes the run up the inside could he have backed out of it yes but it could have ended up in even more carnage i think that uh, unfortunately for jason doyle i think he's uh going to get excluded here but um, uh, we will wait and see exactly what the referee's decision is he's just got himself in a very vulnerable position there you know Mickelson was on the inside he was couldn't really put the brakes on too hard there so it was difficult to back out of he has charged in he has collected Jason Doyle he has effectively knocked him off his bike but it was difficult for after those mistakes and the lack of momentum that Jason Doyle had it's difficult really for Nickel Mickelson to do too much about it but a referee yeah. might see that differently. We might there, but if he looks at that and just takes it upon that and doesn't look at why it happened, but we'll see. Jason Doyle will be a little frustrated, but um, if he is excluded, we're still waiting. Yeah, White is out here. So uh, he's excluded yes, Mickelson. Mickelson, Mickelson, which I don't agree with. I'm no, sorry. I, I know exactly where you're coming from. I just had a feeling, particularly seeing that last angle, that that's the decision he would make. OK, let's get some more reaction now with Scott Nichols in the pits. Yeah, we had a Legends night last night. Now we have a legend of the TT world. John McGuinness joins me. John, you're a man of two wheels. You love your speedway. You love Cardiff. Absolutely. It didn't clash on the calendar, so I was putting straight in the calendar. So I couldn't miss this event. It's absolutely special. Really, really cool. And uh, loving it. Yeah, really, really enjoying it. Great racing and uh, what a night. And probably not everybody knows, but you, yeah, you love your speedway, but you've had a bit of a dabble as well. <laughs> I have, yeah, yeah. Dislocated my shoulder first time I rode one at Scunthorpe, you know. You guys make it look so easy, and when you're on the terraces looking at it, it looks, it, like I say, it looks simple, but it's not easy. I respect these guys so much, and, uh, yeah, it's an incredible sport. And uh, to do, like, 0 to 16, 1.8 seconds, and what you do is, is, is awe-inspiring, and I, I really enjoy it and uh, respect you so much, but it's not easy. You know, what I do, you suppose you're looking at my job, 180 mile an hour, it looks easy, but it's not. But your job is really special. Two the words out of my mouth, you would not get me anywhere near, near that TT track. We'll but you've, you you've had a go around here, though, as well, haven't you? Yeah, I rode here a couple of years ago. I was it 19 last time it was here, and I had a spin on Thursday with Greg Hancock, and it was a massive box tick for me. You know, I just got to ride around this track. It was really special. Not as fast as you guys, but, uh, yeah, I got I got to do it. And uh, it was, yeah, it was a big, top, a big tick box for me, and uh, I really enjoyed it, mate. And the TT is always such a special atmosphere. I'm not fortunate enough to be in there myself, but how does Cardiff, kind of the, the street atmosphere and the whole scene, how does that compare to, to the TT for you? Yeah, very similar. You know, I mentioned I was up early this morning. We've had a couple of beers around the town. The atmosphere is Mardi Gras. Everybody's really excited to see the speedway bikes go around again. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's such a carnival atmosphere. and It's the best one on the calendar, and I wouldn't miss it for the world. Well, you're here, and I'll let you enjoy the rest of your night. Thanks for chatting to us. Cheers, Scott. Cheers. Yeah, really good to see John McGuinness. He is a genuine Speedway fan. 
and uh, his return to the TT this year was uh, a fabulous achievement. He didn't win, but he didn't uh, disgrace himself at all. So fair play. At the age of 50, John McGuinness going back to the island after a very badly broken leg. Fair play to him. And as I say, I see him at Bellevue regularly, and he loves coming down to Cardiff. So great to see him here enjoying the uh, activities. No surprise to see Mickelson on the phone here. I thought that may well go the other way, but um, either rider who was going to be thrown out of the race was going to be upset. Yeah, you know, te technically it's just a very difficult thing uh, for a referee to, to maybe understand if he hasn't ridden a speedway bike, been in that situation. We we could both see that it was difficult for, for Nickel Mickelson to back out of. He sees that he, he rode into the corner. He chose to continue riding in the corner, which in my opinion, and I think yours, he had to do. And, uh, and collected Jason Doyle, but I, oh. I just had a feeling a referee would actually call that one differently to us. Well, he's just gone with the fact that, that he hit Jason Doyle. He hasn't appreciated the circumstances, but unfortunately, Nicole Mickerson clearly unhappy, and uh, after winning his last two rides, will not score points here, but it's a, a reprieve for Jason Doyle, that's for sure, and I'm sure he's going to take this opportunity with both hands. And uh, Doyle back in. And can he make amends this time? Ty Wolfenden is not well here. He is struggling, and uh, not uh, what he would have wanted the on the... Get out of the way. Apologies for any language there that may have offended you, but clearly a frustration there from Mikkel Mickelson. And, uh, doesn't agree with uh, Jesper Steentoft, his compatriot, actually, the Danish referee, deciding that uh, he was the guilty partner there. I don't think everybody agrees with that, but nonetheless, a, a rerun with three riders here. And Tom Brennan will come back out. Jason Doyle in the rerun with uh, Janowski also here. Coming round for heat number 13. And uh, Chris, this is uh, important times from, I've got to say, for Matsu Janowski. He hasn't won a race tonight. He's going OK. He's on five points, but uh, a win here on to eight with one more ride to go before the semis. That would really put him in a much happier place. Yeah, we sort his confidence out. You know, he's had three rides, hasn't managed to win a race yet. Five points is not comfortable. He needs to score decent, solid points here. Brennan on the inside in red. Jason, Long, Jason Doyle alongside him in blue. Mickelson is excluded. And Matsinovsky going from the outside. Yes, absolutely. He's not safe right now. He's vulnerable, so he needs to pick up at least the second place but race wins on countback remember when you get to the semi-finals are hugely important so if he can get that run around the first turn he'd be delighted well Mickelson missing from gate three is going to do uh, Janoski a massive massive favor can't disagree absolutely right there's the rider in you love it so here we go um uh, second time of asking for heat 13 then this is their fourth outing and uh, they'll be keen to get amongst the points of course they will and uh, we're enjoying this. This is uh, a bit of controversy there with the referee's decision. But uh, we like a bit of that. But uh, nonetheless, it's a second chance for all three, particularly Doyle. He must have feared the worst there. <laughs> but, yeah, um, yeah. He's had a tough night, two fairly heavy falls. Yeah. Tough fellow. Right, here we go then. Janowski just coming forward in the nick of time with two seconds remaining. Three lights about to come on. Team number 13 and we're away. They get that first turn. It's all about Jason Doyle, but here comes Janowski around the outside. He's very, very wide. Doyle again lifting Same. down the back straight, but he's hung on to it. He's out in front. He's made amends. He's kept it all under control. Brennan now coming through on the inside, but out of shape. That allows now Matt Janowski back through into second place. But Jason Doyle, well, it could have been a 50-50 call. He could have been there sitting in the pits, but instead he's out in front. He's powering away, looking set for another three points here. Yeah, he'd made a decent start in the first attempt to run this race before making that mistake it looked like he was going to make the same mistake again uh, in the rerun it looks to me like he's actually gone back onto the original bike that he crashed uh, under the fence in his first ride so uh, yeah i think he's just uh, trying both bikes but he's he's not again like a lot of riders he doesn't look comfortable but he's out front best place to be looking good out of the last corner and Doyle wins in style superb effort from him he is well and truly in this now that is a terrific turnaround of events for Jason Doyle. He had six points moving on to nine. That'll almost uh, but, uh, guarantee a semi-final place for the Australian. Uh, be pleased with that. Matt Janowski solid without being spectacular back in second place. And Tom Brennan trying ever so hard momentarily in second place, but just got out of shape. Doyle out in front, three points for him. Janowski back in second place, two points. Tom Brennan picks up another point. 
in third place and Mikkel Mickelson who was excluded but clear delight in the camp of Australian team uh, there no doubt about that good ride from Jason Dorr here yeah he has to work hard to get across Tom Brennan Tom had made a decent start from the inside and Magic Janoski had all the room in the world I expected him to make a better job in the first turn take advantage of uh, being able to use the dirt line and the freedom up on the top of the banking but he just doesn't let the bike flow. He's not riding with a great deal of confidence. This is where Jason Doyle looks like he's having a repeat of the first attempt to run this race. He lifts again, and uh, again, he's not looking particularly comfortable with the bike and the setup. It's not an easy track to be comfortable on now. It is rutting out, it's a few holes appearing. As I said, it looks to me like he's gone back to that original bike as well. Well, it worked a treat there, that's for sure. So the right decision once again. He was forced to ride the second bike initially, which was. Uh, Pretty useful actually, so um, uh, quite clearly favouring the uh, first one once again. So he uh, celebrates nicely, and as I say, he now moves on to nine points and is looking good for a semi final slot, that's for sure. So heat number 14 is with us. So we've got some big charges here, that's for sure. Patrick Dudek sitting now on the inside, just getting ready for this race. Great reception once again for Dan Bewley. On the inside is Patrick Dudek in the red helmet colour. Dan Bewley coming out of gate number two in blue. Gate number three, Robert Lambert. He is having a tough night. Gate number three, white for the British rider. And Anders Thompson, another rider who's having not the night he wanted. One point for the previous winner in Gorjov. That is not what we were looking at. Weren't expecting that, but clearly I did hear a whisper before the meeting that he's got a shoulder issue. There's a ligament damage in the shoulder, possibly in this tough night in the cauldron of the Principality Stadium. He is finding conditions just a little bit too tough. Yeah, this track really is testing. You need to be on top of your game. You need to be focused. You need to be fully fit. We're seeing the riders that are carrying injuries are struggling a little bit. Well, they are. It's a, a thorough workout, that's for sure. Got to be on top of your game here tonight. Right, he 14 then. Patrick Dudek on the outside. Dewey on gate number two. We're away. Dewey's missed it. Great start from Patrick Dudek. Coming round the outside in the yellow helmet colour there, it's Anders Thompson, but he's into second place, powering on, dives into turns three and four, but Dudek on that inside just about retains the lead as they complete the first lap. Now, here we go then, once again running wide, Anders Thompson, Bewley back in third place, looking like he's picking up some speed there. Got to say that uh, Robert Lambert is not enjoying here, he's out the back, but Bewley, keep your eyes on Bewley because he looks like he's got speed and is searching for a way through, but Patrick Dudek, once again, he is looking in front form here and Anders Thompson whatever he's done change of equipment whatever it is he's right on the pace this time uh, three handy points for do that will take him on to nine now Bewley's just searching the outside he hasn't been doing that making some lines uh, now on Anders Thompson but do that would go on to nine points brilliant right from Patrick do nine points for him and almost certainly into the semi-finals Anders Thompson picking up a useful second place but possibly won't be enough as he will finish his qualifying races um, uh, with his next ride. Dan Bewley just slipping up a wee bit, but no panic stations there. He moves on to nine as well. So after those stunning two rides, he's picked up solid points. But for Patrick Dudek, I've got to say, a very accomplished performance here this evening with three heat wins and a zero. He's um, uh, really doing the business. There we are, three points for Dudek. Anders Thompson back in second place, two for him. Dan Bewley in third place, one for him. And Robert Lambert, well, a night to forget so far for Robert. And uh, a disappointing evening for him. But for that man, all of a sudden, we saw it actually in Tetra when track conditions were rough. The most unlikely man you would expect to win, but won very nicely. And he's doing a fine job here tonight. Seems to be coping with tricky tracks very well these days. Hits the front here, does a good job, just uh, uses enough track to make sure nobody can get past him and moves on to nine points with the win. It's only one point off the top six, uh, currently in eighth place in the standing. So a big night tonight is going to move him up the uh, scorecard quite nicely. Yeah, fine ride from Patrick Dudek. He'll be chuffed with that that's for sure we'll be um, uh, focusing now on his um, uh, last qualifying race in the next block of races but uh, um, uh, we can sit down now and relax just for a few moments while we concentrate on heat number 15 now so there we are it's a nice little bit of a debrief nice place to be after winning three races here it's um, uh, looking good for the semi-finals so heat 15 then we're up at tapes, you can see there the nine points. Good performance, very good performance. 
So, yeah, here we are then on the inside. We've got um, Max Frick, who will come out of there with the red helmet colour. You can clearly see those ruts now developing, and they can be problematic. You've got to be very cautious of those. On the inside is Max Frick in red. Tava Chapelski alongside him in blue in gate number two. Bartosz Schmarzlik very quick last time, coming out of gate number three in white. And Jack Holder having a good Grand Prix, six points to his name from the outside in yellow. Bartosz Schmarzlik last time, Chris, very impressive. Clearly working hard in the pits to find that speed. Yeah, I mean, Bartosz's own work ethic is, is huge, and his team is exactly the same. They will work tirelessly throughout the night to find all the improvements that they need and they certainly found a bit more speed for him in his last race. They did indeed, fine ride and uh, the first man to beat Bewley and um, uh, I think that uh, is a nice response when uh, Bewley came out with two stunning rides in his early two rides. So 15 settling down nicely, green light comes on. Oh, long pause. Away we go, Fritz made a great start from the inside, holders there as well. Holder coming round the outside, smarts has gone down with Chapelski. Bit of argy-bargy in the first corner there between the two Polish riders. Didn't I think quite Ch see Chapelski what may have been breaking down, I'm not sure, it was very strange. Yeah, it was a tight tussle in the first corner between the Speedway of Nation winners, of course, Max Frick and, and uh, Jack Holder doing a fine job for Australia there, and Bartosz Smarzik just feeling and biting the dust for the first time tonight. It was a little untidy, it was a long way through that first corner, so possibly Jesper Steentoff may, may not look at that as an opportunity to put all four back. No, I think it's going to be an exclusion. Should go out for that. I, I don't know if it was a bike problem or whether it was just the track caught him out. Maybe got off the throttle and the thing just didn't turn. But we can see here, makes a reasonable start, gate two. Uh, comes into the corner there, the bike picks up, gets off the throttle because he has to to miss Max Frick. Yeah. And he takes uh, Swarzlik out. That's a no-brainer. It, it's it's got to be an exclusion. Yeah, for that's him. a no-brainer for Pavel Chapelski. Actually, Swarzlik, now we see it again. I was focusing on what was going to happen in the front, but you can see now Swarzlik actually puts the bike down. Yeah, he knows he's going to get collected. If he doesn't, he doesn't want the contact. I think he's done the right thing to avoid uh, any nastier crashes. Yeah. Yeah, we're hearing it confirmed now that Chapelski has been excluded, which was a straightforward decision this time for the referee. So, um, uh, a rerun with three riders. Um, uh, disappointment for, for the uh, Australian pair because they were looking set for first and second there, so they've got to do it all again. So uh, we will, while well, we've got a uh, short pause, we'll get some reaction now with Scott Nichols. He's uh, joined by Anders Thompson. Yeah, Hero, last time out in Gorjov, Anders Thompson, it's been a tough start to your night. Yeah, I've been really tough. Uh, I had a few fail out with the bikes. Uh, now we saw the problem in the last one. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's a little bit too late now, but uh, we are focused and uh, want to make a good wrestle in the last time. Yeah, you, did you have to change bikes or was it just a simple kind of elimination process? Yeah, it was actually Nixon box. Uh, I had some problem in it. Uh, I, I have no refs on it. So uh, when we changed it now, uh, everything was good again. So yeah, a little bit too late, but uh, yeah, focus for the last race. Yeah, there's ways more to go. It's all about making the points up. What are conditions like out there? It looks like it's a pretty tricky track. Is it difficult to see where the ruts are? Exactly, uh, the, the track is, is really difficult to ride on. Uh, it's really hard with the light to see where the ruts are on the track. So, you know, you go in and a little bit stiff in the body because you know there's many ruts in it. And, and when you hit the rut and you have a stiff body, it's, they always, yeah, go away with you, the bike. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's the same for everybody, but uh, it's, it's really rough in there. Yeah, it's important to try and be relaxed on the bike and appreciate it. It's, it's tough, but I wish you the best for the rest of the night, mate, and uh, go well. Cheers. Thank you. Well, a positive response there after a difficult night. Fair play to Anders Thompson. He comes out in heat number 20 to complete his qualifying races. That's a frustrating problem there, isn't it, with the ignition box? Don't see too many ignition boxes around these days. I uh, know uh, there are one or two systems. There's a, a much more modern system that's come from Denmark uh, that has a lot of adjustments that you can make. The rider can actually make those adjustments himself, which is handy when you get up to the start line and you find something that perhaps you didn't uh, expect. Kevin Chapelski there, just finding Grand Prix tough this year. He's a very professional young rider, but um, as I say, at this highest level, has found it difficult to get amongst the points and uh, excluded this time. So Bartosz Marslik doing the right thing there, putting the bike down, so just preparing himself to come out for the rerun. And uh, he's looking set fair, though. He's looking in a strong position, Schmarslik, with two wins and a second place to his name. 
on the cusp of the semi-finals already. We find ourselves saying that a lot this year. Oh, Smarsnik's not at his best. He's not maybe got that much speed, and yet he's uh, on top of the score chart. So far I tell you what, I wonder if he's points. been inspired by the speed of Dan Bewley tonight, because no doubt about it, he beat Bewley, and he wanted to beat Bewley, didn't he? You know what I mean? And he sort of responded to the speed that Dan had showed in his first two rides. No, no question he wanted to lower his colours, that's yeah, and, for sure. he, and he did it in fine style, so suddenly, all of a sudden, he's, it's like he flicked a switch and he just found the speed. It's a, it's a remarkable simple, thing. Right? I wish it was, yes, but um, there we are. If only it was, we all would have been winners. And now, second time of asking for heat number 15. Baxwick has gone the short cut route. And, uh, he will uh, get himself prepared for this uh, restaging. Jack Holder on his way round as well. Jack it's Holder. interesting, that actually, just, just quickly to go touch on the start line, you were talking about the deep ruts earlier. You can actually see on the start line that each uh, starting position only has two or three ruts. Normally on a traditional track, you'd see ruts all the way across the, the grid. Um, the riders don't tend to like to start on the fresh because the bike will actually cut through the dirt and go down. So they're looking for a firmer base to get the tyre on. They are indeed, but there will come a time when you'll be forced to move away from them. So that uh, is a uh, crucial moment. So <coughs> Jack Holder and Bartosz Marzik just doing their gardening, as is Mac Max Freak. So important to get away. So there's a line up there. Max Frick on the inside in red. Excluded is Chapelski. Nobody in gate number two. Gate number three. Bartosz Smarzlik in white and Jack Holder going on the outside gate in yellow. So Smarzlik looking strong here. The Australians were looking good initially in the first stagings of this race. Smarzlik didn't make a very good start actually. It looked like it just spun up away from the tapes. Yeah, Jack Holder had actually made a great start from the outside. Smarzlik will now have that on his mind. It's going to be interesting to see what decision he makes on the way to the first turn. Well, he's guaranteed a point here, so um, uh, he's in a relatively strong position, but you know what he's like, he's a racer, he'll want to win, and uh, he'll want to get his nose in front, that's what he'll be looking for, but uh, there's no doubt that uh, the Speedway of Nation winners here in Frick and Holder won't make it easy for him. Well, he won last time out from gate three, so here we go then. Green lights on and we're underway. Marzik hasn't made it, Jack Holder has, he's made a really good fist of it, Holder, and he's made a terrific effort around that first corner, Frick into second place with Smarzlik, relegated to third place, he lifted too hard there, Smarzlik, killed his momentum on the way to the first turn, and Jack Holder took full advantage of that, and Holder out in front looks good, squares that corner off beautifully, Smarzlik a little bit untidy in third place, but Max Frick now settling into second place, but i got to say, these two Australian riders riding really strongly in first... Oh, I say that, commentator's curse. Frick very nearly getting it all wrong there. Jack Holder, uh, yeah, Jack Holder so smooth on that first lap. First turn was superb, really riding the bike well. You can see there's one or two holes now appearing going in the corners. You've got to let the bike float, you've got to get, keep yourself light on it. We heard Anders Thompson say, you can't afford to be stiff on the bike. So out of the last corner, Jack Holder, that is a smashing ride for him. Max Frick back in second place and Bartosz Smarzlik finishing third. Not a disaster, but uh, not entirely convincing. I suggest he didn't really throw the kitchen sink at Max Frick there, just was quite content to pick up the point that he was guaranteed almost. But for Jack Holder, that moves him on to nine points now. So that was a very useful win for the Australian rider. Max Frick in second place. So here's the result. Holder out in front, three points for him. Max Frick in second place, two. Bartosz Smarzlik completes the lineup this time with one point and Chapelski was excluded from the original stage. And Jack Holder's looking good here. Really good. Yeah, he's looking accomplished. He's not making too too many mistakes. Doesn't seem too bothered about the ruts and the holes. He's just floating through them. And he jets off the star here. You know, when you look at that, he's got Smarzlik on the inside of him. And he just roars the thing to the corner. Makes a superbly smooth first turn. Uh, doesn't just uh, doesn't let the bike lift in any of the ruts. Just uses them for a bit of speed. There we can see Jack Holder bouncing into that turn. One or two of these holes are oh, getting a little bit deep now. We've seen mistakes. Uh, there, we've got both wheels actually off the ground as wow. he went into that corner. Wow. And, uh, but it doesn't unsettle him, you know, he's just sitting on the thing, he's, uh, he's feeling confident. Yeah, and I like the fact that you say he's relaxed on the bike, he's not reacting and stiffening up because when that happens then you can get yourself in trouble. But that's the sign of confidence, you've got to have that, and there's clearly plenty of that oozing through the veins of Jack Holder tonight. And uh, fair play to him so far, doing a solid job, and it's getting awfully tight at the top with four riders on nine points. Nice little debrief there with his brother. Things going nicely. So we are now having it confirmed, and this is big news. 
This is big news. Ty Wolfenden has withdrawn from the British Grand Prix, and that's desperate luck for him. Clearly not feeling fit and well, and uh, we've got to send out our sympathies for the three-time former world champion. Ty Wolfenden out for the rest of the night, and Leon Flint will come in here to replace him. That's, uh, that's unfortunate for Ty. So much wanted to do well here, but clearly the uh, injury getting the better of him. So, this is heat 16. This will complete uh, the fourth block of rides. Neil Madsen out here as well. Madsen better last time. Had a good win. He's on six points coming into his fourth ride. So, settling down as we see this. We're going to see this all night long, actually, because you can see now how it's breaking up significantly on the start line. Now, Andre Lebedev will go off the inside in red. Leon Madsen alongside him in blue, gate number two. Leon Flint coming in for Ty Wolfenden here in uh, gate number three in white and Freddie Lindgren going about his business quietly on the outside in yellow and for Freddie he's had a win and he didn't score last time so he's got to pick it up now with a couple of rides to go before the semis yeah and these points in this one five points uh, you've got to say he needs at le least a second here just to give him a, a fighting chance from the points in his last one uh, yeah. terrible news about Ty Wolfen and he was yeah. so keyed up for this loves loves to do well in front of the British fans this hasn't been his couple of weeks, it's a real shame, but here we go then, heat number 16, Freddie Lingren on that outside gate, can he make that first turn work and take that sharp, he missed the start, Neil Madsen didn't, he's made a great start from gate number two, Leon Flint, look at that move from Freddie Lingren, wow, that was a superb move there to shot back through the traffic, roaring round the outside, Madsen's in front, Lebedev gets Leon Flint, a real sharp coming out of turn four and the red lights come on. Yeah, a little bit harsh <laughs> from Lebedev's there. Leon had actually made a decent I start. I love the body language from Lebedev's there. He was sort of almost <laughs> shouldered him off the bike. <laughs> yeah, get out of the way. <laughs> and unfortunately, he did. Uh, I don't Welcome think to Grand Prix Speedway. Yeah, it's tough. And uh, I'll tell you what, uh, Andre Lebedev is just quite a tough fella. And uh, he's a bull of a man, but um, uh, he may well actually come unstuck, actually, Lebedev's for that. We will wait and see. He did actually give uh, young Leon quite a clout as they were coming to the end of the first lap. Yeah, Leon had made a really decent start. He just collected one of the ruts going into the corner, which ran him out a little bit too wide. If that hadn't have happened, I could see him actually coming out in front. Now he, again, he just collects the dirt, turns the bike now. Uh, he is coming back across. I mean, it's not, it's not a massive, it's not a massive touch. Uh, but he does run across the corner. There well, is contact. If, if, he if, does go down. I, I think Lebedev's will go. Yeah, if there's consistency in the referee's mind, then you know when you look back at the incident between Mickelson and Doyle, he's going to go with the fact that the guy that actually made the contact, he will be excluded. Yeah, red layer. Yeah, that's confirmed now. So consistency Consistent. from yes and yes for tenth steam top, which is probably a good thing. But um, and a. Uh, opportunity for Leon Flint to be in the rerun. So um, uh, while we have this uh, short pause, we will get back down to Scotty Nichols for more reaction. Jack Holder joins me. He was the star in practice setting the pace there and uh, looks like you're setting a good pace in the races too. Yeah, mate, everything's going right at the moment. Um, as you can see, the track's pretty tricky, but um, yeah, you just got to, you know, get to that semi, stay safe and, you know, let it all hang out in the semi and into the final. <laughs> it's all hanging out, it's all both wheels off the ground, it's sort of freestyle speedway. Um, brother giving you a few tips of the trade out there? Oh. Easy. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, he's just, you know, it's always good to have your brother in the pits. Um, and yeah, he's won a few times here and yeah, he's just jamming me up and trying to calm me down at the same time. But um, yeah, he's doing a good job and we're all doing a good job. You did a fantastic job, mate. It's all about the composure. Good luck for your next few races. Thank you. Well, yeah, and he will have a few races because um, uh, he's got one more qualifying heat and then he will be into the semi-final. So two races at least to come for Jack Holder. And uh, he's enjoying his time, just trying to keep it all going, keep that momentum rolling on. So uh, plenty of restarts tonight. And uh, Leon Flint just delighted to be out there, just doing a great wheelie down the back straight, entertaining the fans on his way round to the tapes for the second time of asking here. Freddie Lingwin made a great move in the first corner. I've got to say, he missed the start completely, but shot back nicely. So uh, Andre Lebedev's excluded. Nobody on the inside gate in red. Leon Madsen's in gate number two in blue. Leon Flint it will be in gate number three in white. Freddie Lingwin going from the outside in the yellow helmet colour. Big race now for Freddie Lingwin. You've got to believe that uh, he will know, won't he? He will understand the uh, situation he's in. Three points here, and all of a sudden, 
Yeah, so moves him on to eight. Uh, that, that makes him comfortable then. He, he, he maybe doesn't even need any more points uh, in his final race. But uh, Leon Madsen, he'll be happy that there's no one on the inside now. He knows he's got the uh, ground on the inside to be able to use freely. 16 then, green light comes on. Both are up and Neil Matson jumps forward. Absolutely flew out of there. But look at Freddie Lingman. That is some move around the outside. Gotta love that. He certainly is because he powers to the front, fires himself into that third and fourth corner, and Freddie Lingman back to his best there. That was a classy move from the Swedish rider. Leon Matson after a great reaction off the tapes, just finding it a little bit tough. And Leon Matt Leon Flint this time coming into the picture as well. Out in front though, Freddie Lingman exactly where you need to be right now. Dictating terms. Whoa, hang on, hang on, running wide. Kelvin, you've got to stop doing that, mate. Dictates <laughs> curse yet again, and uh, Madsen's had to step it up a little bit because Leon Flint was putting him under a little bit of pressure. But uh, I think Madsen will be happy with this. The track is now getting quite rough, and two points will move him on to eight with the race to go. Into the last corner, then Freddie Lingren. Having to hang on at times, but a lovely first corner sees him through to a second win of the night and moving on nicely to eight points. A good accomplished ride there, made the move early in the race and then stamped his authority right from the get-go. That's what uh, we've come to see from Freddie on so many occasions. Good to see him back on the bike, took a break from racing because ill health came in once again. Covid really presenting problems for um, Freddie over the last couple of years, but good to see him riding nicely tonight. Freddie Lingren out in front, three points for him. Leon Madsen back in second place, two. Leon Flint delighting the crowd there with having a real good go in third place. So. A good result. There we see the standings after four rides each. Nine for Dudek, nine for Holder, nine for Smarslik, nine for Doyle as well, and nine for Beauty as well. So, so tight at the top. This could go any way at all. And um, well, we're thoroughly enjoying it. So, a lovely ride there from Freddie Lingren charging around that outside in that first corner and he'll be feeling much happier about things now because this was a smart move. Yeah, Madsen just lifted violently off the uh, start there. The clutch really banging in. He knows that Frederick Lingren's going to be making the challenge around the outside and Leon does try to move over and cover that move but he doesn't get there in time and he needed a better charge really to the corner. Leon there just using one of those ruts. Uh, shoots him forward, has to get out of the throttle, but he did put Madsen under pressure right here. Bit of a moment there for Leon. He just collects the ruts around the inside, has to get out of the out of the gas, and uh, nearly gets uh, Leon Madsen in the side. But Freddie Lingren, just again, you can see letting the bike float. You've got to be loose on the bike in these conditions. You have indeed, but I tell you, well, this last block of races is going to be really tense times for plenty of riders here. It's really tight. Riders on six points like Mickelson, Max Frick. Certainly, uh, if they can win a race, they will leapfrog. And it wouldn't be a surprise at all to see nine points. You need nine points to make the semi-finals. It's very, very tight indeed. Eight points for Freddie. Nice ride at the right time for him. And um, uh, they're having to work hard. It's been red hot here in Wales for the last few days. And you can quite clearly say, see that they are... Um, having to do the business out there. More reaction now with Scott Nichols. He's got Mikkel Mickelson with him. Mikkel, we know GP life is tough and uh, you're on the wrong end of a decision in Heat 13. Just what's your take on that? Um, well, obviously it's tough. Um, I'll have one opinion and the referee will have another one, but you know, I made a decent start, decided to cut back. Jason got a little bit out of shape there and, you know, I went for it and Unfortunately, we don't have handbrakes, so I was already committed, and you know, Jason turned left and kind of kind of took his front wheel. But you know, I think maybe I, I was in front, and uh, the referee was uh, arguing that Jason was under control. But I'm not sure I agree. No, well, you're never going to, but you're still sitting there. You got a decent points tally. Started the season off sensation. You had a little bit of a dip. Can you put your finger on what that was? Not really. Um, I think it's just more myself than, uh, than anything. Obviously, uh, Prague and Tesorov was not great for me, and, and we were struggling a lot, and I felt like, uh, yeah, I forgot how to race Speedway, but uh, made, a, made a few changes, just, just a tiny bit, uh, to kind of, you know, make, make up for, for tracks not being always in super good condition. This is Speedway after all, so I uh, feel like we've found like a middle thing that's working pretty good, and uh, yeah, apart from the first race tonight, it's been, it's been pretty good, so hopefully I can pull off a great finish in my, in my last race. 
Well, it's the small change that can make big differences. You're still in a good shout, so uh, good luck for the rest of the night, mate. Thanks, Scott. Yeah, good to hear from Mikkel Miss Mikkelsen. You know, quite clearly very frustrated earlier on after the being excluded, but still got an outside chance here. It's going to get very tight, really tight coming into the semi-finals. He'll probably need to win his last ride in heat number 20. He comes out of gate number three there, up against Holden. And, uh, excuse me, gate number two. Um, out of gate number two in heat 20, up against Anders Thompson. Ty Wolfenden no longer part of the Grand Prix. So now we're seeing Leon Madsen just um, uh, having some fresh clutch plates. I'm not sure that is wise, but uh, there we are. His bike leapt away. <laughs> they look like they worked very well. Yeah, they were working overtime, but uh, plenty of track grading going on. This is going to be quite attritional. It has been attritional through the evening, and you know I don't want to blame the track too much, but there's no question it's playing its part. But uh, there's no doubt that the thousands of fans here who have made this extra special effort to come back to the Principality here. Um, fair play to them all, they are thoroughly in enjoy it. So we can get some more reaction now because uh, we can hear from Scotty Nichols because Pete Adams is joining him now. Pete Adams, tyres manager. Pete, obviously I know Ty was really fired up for tonight. I mean, there's no bigger event on the GP calendar in Cardiff. Uh, can you just give us an update on what the situation is, please? Yeah, he's got some uh, pain in his stomach and in his chest. Uh, it was there, you know, even before we kicked off uh, tonight, but as each race has gone on, uh, that's got worse and worse to the point where he, uh, he can't carry on. So he's in the medical room now. They've done some preliminary checks on him and they recommend that uh, he goes off to the city hospital. So just waiting for an ambulance now and away he'll go. It's a massive blow. Is there any... Is it kind of triggered from the, the training accident he has, or is it a separate incident? No, no, no that's all. Uh, the back injury is all cleared up. This is something that just came on today. Uh, and as I said, you can see in his riding, he's far from comfortable. So, um, yeah, it's disappointing for him, and uh, especially for all the fans who have come here to see him in uh, what, as you say, is the biggest event of the year for everybody. Yeah, it's a huge loss, but thanks for sharing that with us, Peter, and I uh, wish Ty all the best. I will. Thank you. Well, we clearly saw that Ty was in discomfort and uh, interesting to hear that it didn't actually relate to the previous injury. So quite clearly, whether it's a case of food poisoning, but let's keep our fingers crossed that all is well with Ty and that uh, he can uh, recover his health very quickly. So the last round of races coming up here. This will be the fifth outing for all the riders. And as I say, this points table is so tight it's quite extraordinary and I, I tell you what if you're not on nine points i think you're going to be vulnerable you're going to have to be right in the thick of it otherwise so certainly riders on seven points like janowski and mickel mickelson and max Frick on six i would say that they're going to have to win their last ride if they're going to make their way through to the semi-finals we will wait and see so here we go then heat 17 lingwin's out again here so sharp around he's uh, out in 16 and 17. it's the last rider coming forward now Sparta Smarsley. Go from the outside gate this time. Going along quite nicely is Bartosz on nine points. Third place last time. So here's the lineup, he's 17. On the inside is Matt Sayanovsky on the warning in red. Warning also for Robert Lambert, gate number two in blue. Freddie Lingwin, good last time. Goes out of gate number three in white. And off the outside is Bartosz Smarsley in yellow. You've got to think that Janowski's under the most pressure here for points because I, I would calculate at the moment to be sure he need a race win here because he hasn't had a race win. Yeah. And on account back with nine points, that's going to go against him. Yeah. Absolutely right, so he um, uh, needs to get his nose in front if he can. Freshly prepared track this time on the inside gate. Needs to take advantage if he can. Shame for Robert Lambert. Um, uh, hasn't had the night he was looking for. Just uh, a couple of points to his name. Can he finish with a rattle here and win a race and make him feel an awful lot better and give this crowd something to really cheer home? But he's up against some big charges here because um, there's no question that Freddie Lingwin has come to the party nicely in his last outing. He'll want to keep going now. He'll want to keep that momentum going on from the previous race. Heat number 17 it is. Fifth ride for all these four riders at Tate. Settling down nicely. Green lights about to come on. 
takes her up and we're underway. You know, she's made a good start on the inside. Lambert's there, though, better, better from Lambert. Got to the first corner, absolutely so. Oh, he'll be wishing that the meeting could start all over again. He's out in front, looking good. This is going to be a nice way to finish the night after a disappointing opening four ride. Smiles it through in the second place. Steady away there, he's got the grip, he's hit that right. Janowski's back in third place. Tell you what, Freddie Lingwin at the back, that's not good news, and certainly not good news for Janowski now, because he slipped back to third place. That could be a very handy point for Freddie Lingwin now. Out in front, though, Robert Lambert all over the place, but he's there, looking like he's going to win his first race of the night. Yeah, whatever it, uh, Robert Lambert has done, I think he wished he'd done it earlier in the night, because he's looking pretty comfortable. Smarslick did take it to him, oh. and I think it's a safe distance now. Freddie Lincoln making a lot of yeah, ground. Yeah, here we go. Smarslick. Freddie coming on strong in third place. Smarslick just cruising around. Front of the line. Smarslick there. Riding very conservatively. Disappointment for Janowski. He's going to miss out. Won't see him in the semi-finals. Brits, uh, the British fans are chuffed to bits with a Brit coming through in fine style there. Disappointing night for Robert Lambert, but wins his last outing, as I said, in the race. Probably wishes he could start and do it all over again because he made a great start away from gate two there, really did. So the winner is Robert Lambert with three points. Bartosz Schmarslik steady away in second place with two points. Freddie Lingren back in third. And Matt Sajanowski disappointing. He's in eighth place, but he's vulnerable there. And he completes his five rides and he in seven points. Out in front is Schmarslik doing enough. Just doing enough. Patrick Dudek with a ride in hand on nine. Freddie Lingren finishes on nine. That point could be very handy for Freddie Lingren. Yeah, I think the two race wins for Freddie Lingren are going to prove vital in this countback. It's so tight for the uh, semi-finals. And we can see there, the rider in blue, Robert Lambert, hasn't done anything tonight. Just a couple of points before this race. But he charges to the front. And uh, he looks pretty quick. I don't know if he's just changed bikes, changed setup, but whatever it is, it will be a frustrated man when he leaves here because he's just proved that he can beat a quality lineup around this uh, track here in Cardiff. And that was a moment there for Schmarsnik as he just picks up quite violently as Freddie Lindgren comes through on Janoski and another vital point for Freddie Lindgren. Yeah, it was, and um, uh, he'll be grateful for that. But he was in the right place at the right time, so. We'll wait and see, but as you rightly say, Chris, two race wins will do him a whole lot of good when it comes to the semi-final picks. And uh, countdown, there's the arena. It's tough out there tonight, you've got to hang on there. Jason Crump just uh, consulting with him. Uh, hasn't been their night, but uh, a race win at the end there, you've got to believe that uh, they go away with something and they'll look forward to Wrocław at the end of the month, where he'll be looking for a whole lot better. Wasn't his night, but he moves on. Heat number 18, they're at tapes. And uh, we are rapidly moving towards the semi-finals now. And the conclusion of the qualifying races. Andre Lebedevs will go away from the inside in red. Patrick Dudek in gate number two in blue. Tom Brennan will come out of here for uh, coming out of here in gate number three. And off the outside this time, it will be Max Frick. Now, Max Frick's one of those riders right on the cusp. He's on six points and needs a win. Uh, if he wants to make these semis. I, I, I've just got an so I'm, I'm going out on the limb here. You're going to need nine points here, I reckon. Well, 100% and maybe two race wins. Yeah, exactly. So Max Freak, under pressure, needs to perform. And you've got to believe that uh, Brennan's in there as well. Dudek's doing a fine job. You know, he's coming along nice. He's had three race wins. He's on nine. So really and truthfully, he's probably not quite under the same pressure. Andre Lebedev's... Well, it could be a spoiler on the inside. You can never quite trust what's going to happen there. But <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say you never quite trust him. Well, I, I don't know. He's, he can be quite exciting to watch. So we're going to keep our eyes peeled on him. But Patrick Dudek doing a fine job here this evening. There's no question about that. Very professional. And really there, just uh, patiently waiting on. So here we go then. Heat number 18. Made a great start out of gate number two. He hits that first corner, but he's so lifted very violently. Andre Lebedev is hugging the inside, takes advantage, but Dudek somehow stayed on his motorbike there. Runs in hot, but he's allowed Max Frick to come through in his second place. Well, the gates Dudek to the back. Brennan's out there, but Andre Lebedev just literally hustled that bike round the inside in the first turn, and he's going to finish on a on a flourish here. Max Frick, as I said, he took advantage there of the mistake of Dudek. Dudek certainly now a little.
little bit more circumspect, running very wide, but one point should be enough moving him on to double figures. Andre Lebedev is out in front, hanging on to that bike, that strength there coming through. Yeah, strong character. He just wants to come away from Cardiff saying he's a Cardiff race winner. And he's uh, worked away at it all night. Max Rick in second place, not going to be enough for him, I don't think. This will move Patrick Dudek on to uh, 10 points and he'll be in the semis. Well, there we are, Andre Lebedev's finished with a flourish. A last minute call up, of course, for Martin Vasilik. Didn't really practice yesterday because the bikes weren't here. But uh, certainly uh, he'll be chuffed with that, with uh, winning. And he'll have a celebratory lap just to uh, wave goodbye to the fans this evening. So fair play to him. But as you rightly say, Max Frick moving on to eight points. Well, we'll wait and see with two more qualifiers to come. We've got Dan Bewley, J uh, Jason Doyle out in the next one. Leon Madsen is also possibly in a vulnerable position. But um, uh, good to see Andre Lebedev's doing nicely, a little bit like Robert Lambert, finishing with a nice win. Three points for him. Max Vick back in second place. Two points for him. And Patrick Dudek back in third place. Then we see the standings. 11 for Smarzik, 10 for Dudek. Freddie Lingwin on nine. Jack Holder on nine with a race in hand. And Jason Doyle also with a race to come as well. So they have the opportunity to top the table and get the first pick for semi-finals. Let's see it again, Chris. Yeah, seeing it again. It's, uh, Dudek makes a great start, rushes into the corner, turns the bike a little too hard just at the wrong time. And once you do that and you collect a rut at the same time, you can see the depth of the rut there. And the bike lifts violently and just loses all of his momentum. And Lebedev's just determined. I think he wanted a race win. He wanted to come away from Cardiff, saying he's, he's run, won a race here at Cardiff. And a great ride from him. It's been a tough night for him with his exclusion. Uh, Max Frick frustrated, he's going to come very, very close, but it looks like it won't be enough. Oh, and um, uh, tried awfully hard, but uh, Andre Lebedev just had the better of the opposition edge. Patrick Dudek had the comfort of plenty of points in the bag. So we're moving on to Heat 19 now. And uh, we've had the reception for Dan Bewley once again. The place has just erupted every time he comes on track. So uh, a lot of expectation, excitement to see Heat 19, that's for sure. Uh, they're up at tapes getting themselves prepared for their final outing before semi-finals and uh, I am hearing that there will be an extended track grade before the semi-finals so on the inside is Pavel Chapelski in red gate number two is Jason Doyle on nine points doing well tonight blue helmet color for him gate number three in white is Dan Bewley and Leon Madsen off the outside in the yellow helmet color Madsen on eight could do with a point really could do with a pint more than capable got some fresh clutch plates in there might just leap away <laughs> well he leapt away <laughs> last time but he went up he didn't go forward well, that's right he'll be hanging on to that bike and hoping it does go forward and he can get around the outside track conditions tough there's no doubt about that and they're all having to really um, uh, do the very best they can and they're doing that they are doing that they're putting on a fine show in not perfect conditions but these are the best riders in the world and they've got the ultimate prize of winning the Grand Prix here and world Valuable World Championship points on the line. Heat number 19 then. Here we go. Green lights on. Door moving. Door moved quite a lot there. And we've got Sapelski on the inside. Makes a great start. Madsen on the outside all over the place. From far too wide. Here comes Bewley. Bewley's got it all right there. Got the wheels in line. Fires himself to the front. This is just going to be what the dogs are ordered for him. Jason Doyle now coming on strong in third place with Chapelski on tidy in second place. Once again, Chapelski out of shape. Here comes Doyle on the back wheel. All of them all over the place, but somehow they're all staying on. Leon Matson. Oh, oh, spoke God. too soon. Spoke too soon. Jason Doyle for the third time tonight finds himself on his backside, and this time he'll go. He was all on his own. Yeah, unfortunate. The high speed crash just again, but uncomfortable on the bike. Bike just lifting on every single corner. And I've, the got ask, I've got to ask now are track conditions just getting away from these riders now? Uh, they are, they're all quality riders, but they're all ch chasing points. You know, Jason wanted to make sure that he wasn't uh, involved in a, in a count back. Uh, he's got two race wins, so he should be in a reasonable position. Uh, but he'll be very, very disappointed with that. He was just working the inside. He was prepared, actually, to ride through the ruts and try to use them. But sometimes you can pay the penalty, and he certainly did that. Yeah, looking at it again, he just he lifts coming off the uh, second turn, as he's done many times tonight. 
and then mid mid corner just wrong place to be letting the bike go up in the air these bikes they react so quickly they are revving highly uh, they're all tuned and prepared to find maximum traction and when they do they can bite and that's exactly what happened there tough night for jason three yeah times. the exclusion lights on as i say it's the third time he's been off the bike and uh, he will not be in the rerun of heat 19. As I say, track conditions really are very demanding right now. And um, uh, he'll be just keeping his fingers crossed that nine points is enough. And uh, that will see him through. Could well be. Could well be. And um, uh, he'll just have to be patient. Phil Morris there. I think it did just catch him out. You know, you've got the best guys in the world here suddenly on their backside. So while we wait for the rerun, we can get some reaction now with Scotty Nichols. He's got Leon Matson with him. Yeah, just real quick, they're going to be going out for a restart. Leon, you just came in there, just shaking your head at me. Obviously, really not happy with conditions out there. Nah, this is this is getting a little bit frustrating, I think, now because uh, we had we had we had a quite few meetings now in the GP with uh, not very good tracks, and uh, it's also about safety, and uh, it's not safe now. Uh, do you feel there's anything they can do to try and improve the track? I reckon they should try, maybe use 20 minutes, half an hour to try and improve the track a little bit uh, for everyone's safety. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to say, you know, I have to, I have to be careful, I think. Mate, look, I appreciate your change. I know you've got to regroup and safety is a paramount, but uh, all the best the rest of the night, mate, and stay safe. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, Liam will finish on eight points, I believe, so uh, he will be in a vulnerable position there. We just see the... Uh, bike being dragged off of uh, Jason Dawes with the chain hanging off as well so a uh, dramatic there and I do sense that he was just taken unawares there you know and uh, you've got to be able to race on the track but um, let's hope that we can uh, have an extensive track grade after the completion of the qualifying heats and that the semi-finals and the finals are safe for the riders and um, we'll see it. so we've had plenty of restagings of races and we'll have that again now as I uh, repeat myself, Jason Doyle is excluded here. And uh, will we uh, Pavel Shapelsky, Dan Bewley and Neil Matson. Dan Bewley will be a touch disappointed. So, um, uh, some, uh, he will have to do it again. Phil Morris now just been spoken to about track conditions. Um, clearly, um, riders not, uh, not happy with them and making their uh, points to him. Difficult position now for Phil Morris. Does he halt the meeting here and pause it and try and do a track grade now or does he try and push on and get to 820 and then do it i think ideally you'd like to try and complete the 20 qualifying races yeah we have a natural break at uh, the end of heat 20 while we're preparing uh, gate positions and choices for the finals and the, the semi-finals and the finals so uh, you know i think um, i think it would be an ideal time for them to, to grade after 20 but of course rider safety is always paramount OK, let's get down to Scotty, Kint, Scotty Nichols and Jason Doyle is with me. Jason. Yeah, Jason Graham quickly joins me now. Jason, what's kind of the, the mood in the camp right now? Well, it, it's a little bit of frustration because we Robert had a lot of pace yesterday in practice and I think a couple of, a couple of iffy starts and we kind of felt we needed to change some things on the bike. But then he went out, made a start in the last ride and rode a really good race and, and rode well considering how the track conditions are. Which is real quick, the reflection on the track, obviously the boys are not happy. Well, uh, I understand that, but we've ridden worse. Honestly, haven't we? Yeah, we have. Uh, good point, Jason. Back to you guys. Yep, and um, uh, <coughs> just sense that um, uh, there is a touch of frustration kicking about in the pits, but uh, they're going to push on now. We will have a uh, longer track grading after heat number 20. That is confirmed. Phil Morris quite clearly is under a bit of pressure, but um, I, I, I sense that uh, he would rather do that than actually have another grading break now. So we will see the restaging of heats number nine to with Dan Bewley there at tapes. He was away, did a nice job in the first corner and was looking set fair for another win tonight, and that would have seen him move on to 12 points. So if he can repeat that, he'll be delighted. Leon Madsen making his way around there, quite clearly concerned about safety issues, but nonetheless, there's a job to be done here. He's in second in the world on 60 world championship points so he's on eight so he's going to pick up a point here if he completes the race and that might might be enough we'll wait and see but um uh, i just keep 
I think it's because that all is well. Pavel Shapelsky on the inside in red. Excluded is Jason Doyle. Nobody in gate two. Dan Bueller coming out of gate number three in white. And Leon Madsen will go from gate number four in yellow. And Chris, this is now a mental test, isn't it? How you approach it, do you back off or do you attack it? It's, it's not an easy one. Ideally, you want to be in front and just literally, you know, pick your way through it. Ideally, you do want to be in front because you can choose where to ride the track to a degree. But if you leave too much room, of course, if you've got someone uh, extremely brave behind you, they may decide to uh, dive bomb you up the inside. But uh, Dan Bewley, tough ass from gate three. Only been two race winners so far tonight from that gate. It's in a nice deep rut. I hope that's not too deep. So here we go. Deep number 19. Green light is on. Oh, Sapelski moved there on the inside. of Beauty's made an absolute pearler out of gate number three. Ideal. Oh, oh, hang on to it. Lifted violently. We got away with that. Leon Madsen coming through. Very circumspect in second place. Dan Beauty now is going to wind it on. So he's going to ride really wide. Yes, he does. He runs in nice and deep. Smooth on the bike. Yeah, no lifting this time. Good news for him. He's away. Three points should be his if he can just maintain his speed and composure. Looks good, actually, really in front. Leon Madsen, two points here. It's very useful. And all of a sudden, he'll move on to double figures, and that'll be enough. And he keeps his championship hopes alive. Shafelski having all sorts of problems back in third place. Not ideal racing here. Very spread out. Yeah, very much so. It's uh, all about staying safe at the moment. But I've got to say, don't want to put the commentator's curse on him, but Dan Bewley doing all the right things, just riding around in the dirt line, the most consistent part of the track. Not so many holes out there. And he's done what he's had to do. Dan Bewley finishing on 12 points. Smashing effort from him. Guy is uh, limping home here with uh, Leon Madsen grabbing second place and Pavel Shapelsky will finish and picks up one point, but um, uh, quite clearly conditions there not. And you can see the race time there, 55 seconds. It was 53 earlier on from Dan Bewley, but the crowd are loving it. Listen to that. So Dan Bewley finishes his races with a fine win. Three points for him. Leon Madsen back in second place too. That should be enough for him for the semis. Pavel Shapelsky third place won't be so there you see it Bewley tops the charts on 12 Smarslik 11 Dudek on 10 Leon Madsen on 10 so Freddie Lingwin 9 so Max Frick looks like he might just have made this on 8 points for Bewley having the uh, night of his life comfortably through to the uh, semi-final so many people talking about him winning here tonight well, one big race in the semi-finals, first two, and he's in the final for the first time. Yeah, two of the biggest races of his life coming up. Uh, hopefully, if he can make his way to the final, but he's so smooth there. That his only mistake on the first turn there, just a rut that just uh, looks like Jason Doyle has caught several times. But once again, we see a bike with both wheels off the ground. That's not a nice situation to be in, riding one of these things. But uh, he rode the bike very, very sensibly. Now, of course, in a semi-final, he wouldn't be able to ride the bike quite so smoothly and steady and wide because someone's going to dive up the inside. But he did what he had to do in that one. And he did it nicely, too. So um, uh, one race to go to complete the qualifying heats now. And um, uh, just um, uh, explaining exactly what it was all about there, young Dan. So... Uh, it's been a long night already. We've seen plenty of action, plenty of restarts, and uh, track conditions are not at their best. I must say, it's tough out there. And uh, we keep our fingers crossed that we can get to the completion of this race, and then we can get the track back so we can see the semi-finals and safety return. Jack Holder on the inside in red. Nicole Mickelson looking for a win here, coming out of gate number two in blue. Anders Thompson, better last time. He comes out of gate number three in white, and off the outside is young Leon Flint here in heat number 20. Plenty of pressure on Mickelson. I was quite honest in that interview with Scotty Nichols earlier, saying that, yeah, he just couldn't put it down to the bike, really. Just um, that lack of form mid-season really was down to him. That was uh, very rarely hear that, actually, from a rider. No, really. It's, it's actually quite refreshing. But, uh, um, yeah, he needs a race win. If he can get a race win here, he'll knock Max Frick out. So the pressure is on. Yeah, Max Frick in a vulnerable position on eight points. As I say, Mickelson there on six can leapfrog him with a win. If he finishes second place, then it will come to a count back. But Mickelson's got two wins. Max Frick doesn't have one, so that would see him through. So that's the scenario. Big race here in heat number 20. Big lights on, Holder on the inside. Away we go. He's got a good start. 
Mickelson's now alongside him, but Jack Holder once again riding nicely. Look at Mickelson around the outside. Great response from him. But Holder! Holder got his wheels in line. They come into turns three. It's tricky. They were a little bit they were off the gas. Links into third place. Thompson was all, oh, crikey, they're bouncing around on the entrance to both corners now. But got to give a lot of credit to Jack Holder out in front. This is a fine effort from him, but you've got to say that track conditions are really challenging out there. Uh, they are challenging the riders now, actually just riding round with the gas off. Uh, Mickelson will know, though, that he's got to have this race win if he's going to have any chance. Well, it will put him through, but Jack Holder is just doing enough out front. He is indeed one more lap for Jack Holder out in front. This is a good effort from him. Got to say that Mickelson's in trouble there. Leon Flint coming on third place. Won't be enough for Mickelson, unfortunately, but for Jack Holder it will be. He's now comfortably through. He wins heat number 20. Not an easy race, but he'll move on to 12 points alongside Dan Bewley. Once again, the two guys coming in as substitutes. It was that way after the qualifying yesterday, first and second, and it's the same after the qualifying races here tonight in the Principality. Not a comfortable ride, far from it. Slow race time, you can see that. They were easing off on the entrances to the corners. Nonetheless, a very handy three points for Jack Holder. He wins heat number 20 then three points for him Mickelson back in second place two isn't enough although they've got him level uh, well I say that I say that it will be it will be Mickelson will go through won't he because he's got two race wins over Max Frick who hasn't had one you yes. can see that yeah. now confirmed there so Mickelson even though it was really uncomfortable he will make the semi-finals So, yeah, yeah, dramatic Grand Prix here in the Principality, that's for sure. So, uh, fortunately for Max Rick, he uh, comes up short because he hasn't won a race tonight. That's how it works out. Mickelson with two race wins and a second place, he will just creep in. Yeah, Mickelson looked like he was going to do enough around the first turn. Jack Holder, though, again with a good start, a savvy first turn, accelerates down the back straight. And uh, Mickelson didn't really have the commitment into turn three because of the bumps and holes. Uh, he's seen the uh, riders just uh, getting caught out, a few crashes. So uh, it's very, very difficult at this stage, but the track grading is out there already. There's going to be a lot of track grading. There's a lot of staff out there. There's a lot of pointing going on. And uh, I think they can see there Jack Holder. He's off the gas, but the, the back wheel still coming off the ground. But a great ride from Jack Holder, a great night from him. And as you say, look at that again. <laughs> nearly, nearly got over the handlebars the back wheels come so high in the, in the air yeah that's uh, not ideal for a speedway bike it's not designed to do that um, uh, and so uh, they have done remarkably well to get to heat number 20 that camp is happy so there's some um, uh, nice and relaxed so let's um, uh, get to Scott Nichols now he's with Matze Yunofsky for some more reaction Magic, you were so close to making any semi-finals, but uh, maybe part of me feels that you don't necessarily want to be out there. The track is pretty tough. Yeah, the track is tough, um, especially if you not, don't make start. It's, it's hard to do anything. Um, uh, we, we, I, I, I've been looking for something uh, whole night. Um, one time I had better start, then uh, maybe it was a little bit better on the track, but uh, uh, that was not uh, definitely that was not my day. You know, uh, I didn't feel right on this kind of track and um, I have many ideas what to do to, to, to get better on, on, on this kind of track but uh, I don't know, it's, it's, it was hard today. It's very tough and it's almost like we talk so much about bike setup and making the gates and everything else but do you feel tonight was more about just putting it on the line, the setup wasn't so much of an issue, it's more about just trying to, to navigate the track? I think uh, setup is very important on this kind of track because um, uh, if my bike's been very strong, this is my uh, um, these bikes are from from Poland and uh, they are pre pretty strong, so we couldn't make uh, my bike more rideable, or maybe maybe I don't have enough, you know skill for that you know but I don't think it's skill I think it's more that uh, sometimes some days you can take the chances and others you have to just weigh the options up yeah you know it was hard a uh, very hard day um, I'm a little bit disappointed because um, we have such a such a good uh, good uh, riders over here and 
I was uh, I was hoping that we can show better speedway, um, but to this point, uh, this is not uh, this is not funny. Uh, well, we look forward to the next ones, mate, and uh, good luck in the next round. Next one is in Wrocław, so I hope. There we go, all yours. I hope tr track will be better. For sure. Thank you. Okay then, um, uh, disappointing night for Matej Janowski, failing to make the semi-finals, and um, uh, he will be slipping down the rankings now. And uh, obviously, Ty Wuffenden also will be possibly. But Anders Thompson has another good night. It could be a terrific night for Patrick Dudek, who's in the semi-finals. He's in eighth place in the world coming into this, but it's so close and a big result for Patrick, and he'll be in the top six nicely. And uh, Jason Doyle also could make a big move. Dan Bewley, another one that could well see his prospects turn around. So could be turned upside down at the end of the night. But there's still one man there lurking, and that's Bartos Smiles. Like he's going about his job very nicely, lurking, finishing on yes. lurking. And uh, he's uh, certainly uh, on 11 points. He's doing a very professional job. We will have to wait a while now, I suggest, before the semi-finals get underway. Anders Thompson hasn't had the night he would have liked after winning in Gorge, you're finishing on three points. But uh, there's no doubt that some of the guys have really found it tough mentally out there. But when you see those slow-mos of the bikes bouncing around and the engines crashing into the ground, that's uh, not quite right. So. Okay, now let's uh, get back down to the pits with Scott Nichols. He's joined by Robert Lambert. Robert, I know you have been so looking forward to tonight. It's like the ultimate stage, but it uh, didn't happen to you, or for you, sorry, until your last race. Yeah, a little too late, really, but um, no, we was battling hard all night, and um, yeah, if I made the start and got in front and got the track position, then um, you know, I would have been fast, but it's, that's hard to, um, to use that speed when you're behind, and, and the track's a little bit technical, but, but um, yeah, we, we, we got a good win in the end, and, uh, and that was nice to then uh, hear the fans and hear the cheers after, after a win. Yeah, it's always good to finish on a high. You had a fantastic race win. Coming up to the GPs, how much in the week building up to it do you kind of watch DVDs or YouTube clips of the Grand Prix and kind of start doing that preparation for that event? Um, yeah, well, pretty much um, after my match in Poland, uh, I had the whole week free, and uh, yeah, it was you know relaxing, uh, getting in in the, in the mood for for this, and, and getting ready for the noise and everything. And uh, yeah, I, you know, my build up was was spot on to the meet, and just um, yeah, we the bike didn't work how I wanted it to, and um, and as you see, the bike worked well in the last heat, and used the rain, used the throttle, and uh, and used the ruts on the track. And how much of it is it of a curveball when, when the track is drastically different to all those clips, all those mental preparations you've done, and it's kind of almost like starting from scratch? Yeah, exactly. Every day is a new day, isn't it? And um, you have to have to approach it, um, you know, fresh. And um, you can only look back at what there was and uh, and try and be as prepared as you can for for what may lay ahead. But um, yeah, today w wasn't to be for me. Um, but I'm I'm sure I'm going to have many more chances back in the stadium. Well, as they say, you're only as good as your last ride. So take that on to the next one. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, nice job there by Scott. And uh, good to hear that. Um, uh, Robert isn't down in the dumps. As I say, that last race win really has just picked up, changed his mood big time. And then we move on to Wrocław, of course, at the end of this month, which quite possibly will be very different conditions. Um, uh, well, they're still making their points to Phil Morris. Phil Morris will be conducting the draw for the semi -face. So we will be able to um, reflect to uh, on... Uh, some of the action so far, but uh, Phil Morris is having to just calm emotions down here as riders gather before the uh, draw for the semi-finals. So let's reflect on the highlights of the evening so far.
been a tough night. It's been a pretty long night as well with all the restarts, and uh, we'll have a delay here while they work really hard to knock this track back into some shape for the last three races. Chris, not an ideal night for racing, and quite clearly some frustration in the pits, but will championship points on the line now. And uh, you've got to believe that uh, at the end of the day, this meeting is going to come to a conclusion, and you want to go with his, away with as many as you possibly can. But i to say the Barter Smiles League, with the way it's working out again, all of a sudden he is um, sitting pretty. Uh, keeps himself at the top, but we can hear the riders there just stressing to feel what, what he needs to, to do with the track. The track has been graded completely different, actually, this time. They've moved the dirt up the track, they've been bringing it down all night. They're actually trying to cut some of it away and pack around the inside. So I think they're doing all the right things. Uh, Phil generally makes good decisions when it comes to track preparation. Uh, weather conditions and the like so uh, but yeah he's, he's just giving the track staff as much time as, as he can they've got a big big job to do we want the track to be as safe and as racy for us in the semi-finals the lads you know it's, it's crunch time they won't be able to get off the gas they're going to be racing each other that's uh, they need a decent surface to be able to do that on it's not going to be perfect but I think it'll be a lot better yeah, so the semi-final choice will be up next, but um, uh, it won't happen immediately because they will just try and do the very best they can under the circumstances to... Um, they are shifting a fair amount of dirt there, aren't they, with that grader there? It's uh, quite That's, impressive. It's quite the biggest cut they've taken all night. They really are cutting into the top surface. OK, so uh, we will wait and see. It's been a tough night, but uh, when you look at the way it's panning out here, Freddie Lingwin's in there, Ty Wolfenden isn't because he's not feeling very well, Massey Janowski isn't, Matt, uh, Martin Vasilik isn't here, Leon Matson is finding it tough, and uh, Bartosz Marczyk, to be one, to be fair, it's going all his way right now. Right, OK, we are going now to Phil Morris for the gate choices for semi-final number one. And the first choice for gate pick in semi-final one is Dan Bewley. Please select your colour. Dan selects the red gate position. No real surprise there and no hesitation from Bewley to go to the inside. And the second rider to make the selection is Patrick Dudek. Patrick, select your colour, please. Patrick selects the blue colour. Gate number two in blue for Patrick Dudek, who's ridden well tonight. Done a fine job. And the third pick for semi-final one is Frederick Lindgren. Freddie, select your colour, please. Freddie selects the yellow gate position. So gate number four for um, uh, Frederick Lindgren. And you wouldn't and rule him out. And the final choice for semi-final one is Jason Doyle, who selects the white gate position. So there we are. Semi-final number one has... Uh, the draw has been done, so on the inside in, is Dan Bewley in red, alongside him is Patrick Dudek in blue. Jason Dorr will come out of gate number three in white, and Freddie Lingwin will go from the outside. That's not a bad place to be for Freddie, uh, Freddie Lingwin. I wouldn't rule him out of making the final from there. No, and Jason Doyle has won a race already from gate three. And first pick for semi-final two is Jack Holder. Jack, select your start colour position, please. And Jack selects the blue gate position. Obviously feels that gives him more and options. The second to make the selection is Bartosz Marslik. Bartek, select your colour. And Bartek selects the red gate position. Inside gate for Smarslik. The right. third choice of gate pick for semi-final two is Leon Madsen. Leon, select your start position colour, please. Leon selects the yellow gate position. 
That took some time, but uh, that's pretty much reflects this evening, actually. It's taken a bit of time. And the fourth pick for semi-final two is Mikhail Mikkelsen, who selects the white gate position. So that completes the lineup for semi-final number two. I think that uh, Bartosz Marslik will be unhappy about being on the inside. So there we are, he's in red. Pick number two is Jack Holder Thank in blue. Guys. Mikkel Mickelson will be in white. And Leon Matson, who took an age to make his mind up there, but uh, he'll go from the outside in yellow. Yeah, the crowd were getting a little restless here watching that on the big screen. Well, yeah, uh, understandably so. He did um, uh, sort of dither a bit there, but um, uh, quite clearly was undecided. But uh, we now know the lineups for both semi finals. Track rating continuing. Uh, the water bowser is out as well and, uh, they're going to do everything they possibly can to get these semi-finals through they generally don't do a track grading before the finals this is normally the last one but wouldn't surprise me tonight if they do another track grade before the final if it uh, just chops up a wee bit again so we'll wait and see on that score but um, crucial part of the meeting now this is where the big world championship points are handed out so um uh, Riders will want to really go for it, that's for sure. And, um, uh, I'm sure we'll get some more reaction at some point in the pits there. But uh, right now we're looking at... Let's um, uh, get back down to the pits now with Scotty Nichols. He's joined by the four-time world champion, Greg Hancock. Greg Hancock joins me, Greg. You've uh, ridden in some... Tough Grand Prix here in Cardiff over your years. Yeah, he can say that again. I think you have too. So it's, um, you know, you can see it's rough tonight and we've ridden on them when they've been, <laughs> I think, I hate to say this, but they've been even worse, you know, and, um, but times are different. Bikes are different. The guys don't ride these tracks every day and, um, you know, it takes a little bit of a different uh, combination. How much do you feel that, like you just hit on there, the bikes have changed? How much uh, more of an impact do you feel that has when the conditions are like that? Well, for sure, it has a huge impact, and I mean, I, I always had a different bike for this track, uh, for Hammer in Norway or for uh, Copenhagen too. I always had something a little bit different. It was quite a bit different than what I ride normally, but you had to have it for these kind of tracks. And these guys, you know, Cardiff's been gone for a few years, and now they're back, and maybe everybody is kind of a wake-up call. Yeah, and do you feel that's a big thing? Is it like a gamble for the riders to have that kind of unique engine just for these indoor events? Do they feel that they want to be on something they race week in, week out? Well, of course, you, it's nice to ride something you're used to all the time, but when you come here, you're not used to this, so you might as well have something that you can adapt to this situation. And uh, I think a lot of these guys are probably beating themselves up, but um, right now, a different bike combination might just make them feel that much better. Yeah, and we I talked to Magic earlier and said about setup, and obviously we know setup is always key, but do you feel tonight was more of a mental battle for a lot of the riders? It's a combination. I mean, it became a, it's a huge mental battle for these guys going into the semis now too. And, you know, they're all, they all want to have the best chance or best opportunity and to have a fair race, but it's difficult out there and it's, uh, it's the same for everybody. And how do you feel you were in the GPs right from the get go? You're the longer serving rider. How have you seen the Grand Prix change in terms of kind of not just the, the technicality of the sub, but kind of the rider's approach and the professionalism over the years? It's definitely different than the times when we all rode, and I mean, I've been out of it for like three years, going on four years now, and you see the difference. These guys are, they're all super well trained, and they're very focused. Maybe everyone's a little bit more to themselves than we used to be. There's a little bit more camaraderie, I think, between riders before, and now it's very, very much a lot of guys to themselves, and I think that that can also have an effect on the decisions that are made around the sport. And in the build-up in these Grand Prix, because obviously Poland, we know there's been a big pressure league-wise to perform. The, the ante on that has upped even more. Do you feel that the pressure and demands in Poland helps them kind of mentally when it comes to these events? Well, it can help them, it can hurt them. You know, every rider's different and how they deal with, with pressure or tension and things like that. And, and definitely they don't want to get hurt because you've got to be in a, in a league match in a couple of days. But for me, this was the world championship. This is all about me. I, I didn't think about the other leagues because I just wanted to go win for myself. And just quickly, how is Greg Hancock enjoying life after Speedway? You know, I'm here. I'm Always smiling, we know that. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I'm smiling because I'm here. I'm in the pits. I'm doing what I, a little bit of what I used to do and uh, still have my, my head in the game. So uh, I love it. I, life's good. I can't complain. I'm glad life's good. Thanks for chatting to us, Greg, and uh, see you again next time. Look forward to it. Yeah, really good to hear from Greg and um, uh, some very sensible words there. I, picking up what he was talking about, a specific bike to come to these uh, temporary tracks, that 
that's something that I uh, obviously quite clearly worked for him. And it is a surprise that maybe that one or two other guys don't actually have another bike kicking around because it seemed to make perfect sense to me. That was common sense. Yeah, yeah, and it, it wasn't just one thing. I know Greg used to, to play about with the uh, rear subframe on the bike uh, for tracks that are cutting up and, and things. He might just run slightly longer uh, rear subframe to make the, make the bike handle a little bit better and react a little bit slower to the bumps and ruts. Uh, and of course, engine configuration can make quite a bit of difference as well. So, you know, that's why he's a four times world champion. He's a thinker. Yep. And um, uh, so there's no doubt there will be several riders going away from here thinking, well, maybe I need to do something a little bit similar. And we see Ronnie O'Sullivan. I do hope he's enjoyed his evening. Uh, he was uh, very excited before uh, when we saw him being interviewed on several occasions in the pre show. Great to see the seven time world champion snooker player here. Um, uh, I think it's probably quite a unique experience for him. But um, as I say, we are going to have a delay, and understandably so. Two good-looking lineups here. Dan Bewley, we've got to reflect on his performance so far. Had a great night, uh, picking up 12 points from five outings and finishing with a great uh, win in Heat 19. Hasn't made a final. So many people in the town today were just saying, oh, yeah, Dan Bewley's going to win. You know, he's my favourite. He, he's going to do it. But um, when he was interviewed before, he did remind everybody, I haven't made a final yet, so, um, and he still hasn't. <laughs> That's so, his nature. Yeah, it is. So, but he's more than capable. He's got the inside gate in the semi-final number one, and you've got to believe he's got a very good opportunity here. He has. There's no question against the opposition that he's facing. He's going to have to make decent starts, decent choices in the first turn. But, uh, you know, we've seen him make some remarkable starts. He's made a great one off the outside in his first ride tonight. Uh, he is capable of winning this event tonight. Yeah, I would think, uh, you know, he's got two tough men to race here with Doyle and Lingren. There's no doubt about that. And they won't take any prisoners. They're going to take every opportunity they can. Because as much as there's frustration in the pits, when that green light comes on in these semi-finals, you've pointed it out, they're going to race. They're not going to have the luxury of being able to cruise into the corners because somebody's going to come roaring through. So hence there is this extended track rating break. Phil Morris out there. All of a sudden, there's all sorts of suggestions and he wants... I saw Amanda Castagna out there earlier as well. So there's plenty of attention going on so we can complete this meeting in a proper fashion. We don't want riders going all over the place. Uh, we saw the riders talking to Phil down in the uh, pit lane there a little while ago, and you could tell by their gestures that they were telling him or advising him how much they wanted taken off the surface, uh, how far they needed to go to try and remove, if not all of the ruts, at least the, uh, the, the harsher ones. And uh, I think they're doing all the right things. I think they're doing a good job. Um, I'd like to think that we'll get away without actually having to have another track grade, but you never know. OK, let's get some uh, more track reaction now with Scotty Nichols. Yeah, it's a thankless task trying to prepare the track. Obviously, the riders will have their input. I just had a quick chat with Amanda Castagna and Phil Morris, and, and they're trying to kind of take the edges off the, the ruts and try to take the dirt out, try to get rid of some of that loose material in those ruts. Obviously, they're disguising the ruts, but you can see behind me it's a very difficult process. It's going to be difficult for the riders, too, because they're going to have to weigh up. Has the track changed? You can see they're going past now, trying to pack those ruts in. I believe it's going to be the material is possibly too dry for the ruts to pack in, so it may still be a lot lottery and uh, it's going to be a headache for the riders. it's going to be a lot for them to deal with but rest assured obviously Phil Morris and the boys are doing the absolute best they can to try and uh, turn this track around. We keep our fingers crossed on that uh, Scott um, uh, because we want to see a real grandstand finish to uh, us returning to the Principality Stadium. So much excitement before the evening began. And, um, you've got to believe that um, uh, we want to see a great conclusion. And there's no doubt that uh, if we get a British winner here, we've had some disappointment with Ty Wolfen and having to withdraw Robert Lambert, not having the night he really wanted. And um, uh, of course, now all, our, all the British hopes are with Bewley. But Jack Holder is also a rider that has ridden superbly well tonight, clearly full of confidence, really on a roll right now. Yeah, and it's very nice to see that those two young lads, uh, Dan Bewley, Jack Holder, able to translate their quick times yesterday into uh, pace tonight in the races uh, mixed with track craft it just shows they're not just about going fast they can make starts they can race they can pass people uh, they really are developing into a couple of fine young riders 
They are indeed, and that kind of confirms that uh, practice, you know, you can do a good time in practice and get a good draw, then all of a sudden your Grand Prix can be a touch easier, but they've done fine work. As I said earlier, Bartosz Marsnik is sitting pretty effectively uh, with uh, some of his nearest understanding to it. Holder on 12, Bartosz Marzik on 11, Patrick Dudek on 10. We see the World Championship points have dished out for the guys that missed out on the top eight. So uh, Leon Madsen there on 10 as well. So, um, as I say, we're, we're going to have to wait. Um, uh, plenty of noise in the stadium. Can't actually hear myself talk at the moment, but um, uh, it's um, uh, the fans are getting restless. Quite extraordinarily loud now. The guys with the, the most to gain in these semi-finals and then possibly final, I think Jason Doyle, Dan Bewley, Nicole Mickelson, uh, just sitting there, 10th, 11th, 12th, really can move up the leaderboard with, with a decent result here. So, um, uh, while we've got the uh, track grading continuing, we'll just refresh your memories about the draw for the semi-finals. We'll have that with you as soon as possible. So this is semi-final number one. Dan Bewley off the inside, alongside him Patrick Dudek and Blue. And Jason Doyle, who's battled hard tonight, has had three crashes, but he comes out of gate number three. And Freddie Lingwin will go from the outside. And for Dan Bewley, I've got to say that all those other three riders will not be an easy task. He's going to have to get his way, I think. If he can, then there's every chance of him making his first final. But riders like Doyle and Freddie Lingwin in particular, I, I just sense they're mentally very strong. Yeah, Dan, Dan would have to move them out of the way on the first turn. So semi-final number two then, the lineup is Bartosz Schmarslik, Jack Holder, Michael Mickelson and Leon Madsen. Now, Leon Madsen clearly is unsettled. He took an age to make his mind up about gates three or four. Jack Holder is in a completely different mindset. And Bartosz Schmarslik very calmly just maintaining his form and, in truth, We'll go away from here, I would suggest, with at least an 18-point lead. Yeah, Jack Holder showed a lot of confidence to take gate two. He would, he would have known that Bartosz Marzik would immediately step up to the red pad uh, down there while they were making their gate picks. And, uh, you know, to put a guy like that off the inside of you, I don't know whether that whether that's, uh, shows a lot of confidence, stupidity, I don't know what it is, but I, I wouldn't want him on the inside of I me. Mean, I, I think no. Jack's just full of confidence at the moment. Well, he is clearly confident, and he's made good starts from gate two. Uh, the challenge will be to make sure he gets a better jump than uh, Bartosz Schmarzik so he can pin him on the inside as they go to the first turn. Close look at the track then, plenty of stones in that. That's unusual, we don't see those big rocks in it before. We're not quite sure why they've uh, suddenly appeared. Um, but um, there are challenges with the temporary track. So um, uh, while we're watching the track rating continue, we'll give you a taster of what we've seen so far this evening. holding we're not too far away from this first semi-final but uh, its first track grading machine is now leaving the arena and um, uh, we do hope that we aren't too far away from action beginning once again great response from the crowd they are clearly very patient and uh, they are enjoying themselves and, uh, we will see exactly where it does look like it's coming to its conclusion here because um I think so, anyway. Phil Morris is there at the gate where the uh, tractors actually then just uh, park up out of the way. So, Dan Bewley, Dudek, Doyle, Lindgren, semi-final number one. Tense affair, this. Not ideal. This is tough for riders having to be very patient. 
and uh, this uh, time may be just the catch of breath as well it's a tough night it's a hot night it's been physically demanding that man's been on his backside three times this evening Freddie Lingwin clearly not quite as fit as he would like to be uh, as a consequence of long COVID but this man has done well here before hasn't won it but um, uh, is still in there. This man, he, he perfects me at times. We, we spoke to him earlier this year and he was down in the dumps, Chris, wasn't he? And then um, when he won in Tetro, it was like, here we are. That's the real Patrick Dudek back. Yeah, and, and his erratic riding style, uh, whilst extremely entertaining, doesn't lend itself to these types of tracks. But on the two toughest tracks of the year, he's actually put in his best performances. That man then, Bartosz Schmarzik, things going along nicely for him. Just keeping his head down, just remaining calm because uh, he's still in the driving seat. His, some of his nearest compatriots and contenders have slipped away once again tonight, so it's uh, giving him a massive opportunity um, uh, to extend his lead in the World Championship at the conclusion of the night. So, yeah, we are not too far away now. Riders now preparing themselves for semi-final one. And uh, the water bowser is now beginning to make its way towards its exit. And uh, when that happens, then riders will be pushed off and they will come back into, out into the arena. And got to believe that um, uh, the work that's been done, the track should be a fair bit better than it was before. That was quite an extensive regrading. And I've got to say, they moved a lot of material. They moved a lot of material. They actually did the grade uh, completely opposite to how it's been graded all night and how you would be used to seeing it. Moved the dirt up to the top. Uh, so I don't know whether the dirt line will work as well, uh, possibly, but uh, it's brought a different dynamic now because the track, no question, has changed a little bit. Absolutely right. It might be that the inside gate may be just the right place to be now. We've seen all night long that roar around the outside has been really very beneficial indeed. And so for Frederick Lingman going from gate number four, he will encounter very different conditions no sighting lap here you don't get a practice lap before the race will start you've just got to get on with it and you're going to have to just react to how things pan out massive moment for dan Bewley here he's made a semi-final before more than one semi-final got so very close in gorge i've just squeezed out by smarzig actually and uh, just came up short that night just before the riders hit the track kelvin prediction time who's going through from this one well i'm, I'm going to stick uh, with with dan Bewley and i, I, I sense that um, Jason Dorr must have a, a decent chance as well if he can stay on his bike. So um, uh, I'm going to go with those two. Yeah, I can't disagree. So there we are. Back out on track. Fans delighted to see that. And uh, as I say, this is where we see the big world championship points handed out. And uh, all four riders will be desperate to make the, semi, uh, the final, of course. First two go through. Third and fourth will then miss out. So um, uh, a sudden death semi-final the way the system works. So we're going to go there, isn't it, Kelvin? Now it is indeed. Dan Bewley will go from the inside in red. Da Patrick Dudek alongside him in blue. Jason Doyle in white in gate number three. And Freddie Lingwood from the outside in the yellow helmet colour. Tense times. I've had to be patient. We all have. It's been a long night. It's been a tense night. It's been attritional. But now, semi-final one. Fingers crossed the track behaves itself and we can see some fine racing. If you're wondering who that is, that's Dan Bewley. <laughs> um, because um, every time his name is mentioned, the place goes mad. So quite clearly, a tremendous amount of support for the young British rider. But he's up against some experienced campaigners here. A world champion, a former world champion, a former world number two, Freddie Lindgren, always there or thereabouts. A world number three in the, in the past. Some real, real hard-nosed speedway riders coming up to tapes. And a man trying to make the final for the first time. And. Uh, if he can replicate something similar to what we saw earlier on tonight, then he has every chance of going through to the grand final. So, guys just um, doing a bit of gardening there. It's certainly beautiful. Yeah, is. Dan's having to work very, very hard down there on the inside gate. I, I wonder if he's uh, maybe wishing he'd pick gate two. Uh, he looks like he's settled down now. So here we go then, semi-final one. We've had to wait, but uh, we're now going to get on with the action. Green light comes on now. Oh, doors in the tail. Can you believe it? What's happened to Dudek? He's just fallen over. Well, the That's drama continues. It's just, uh, it's one of those evenings where you just cannot, anything could happen here tonight. I've got a feel for Jason Doyle. He's been on, off the bike three times. He had a reprieve by making it. And then unfortunately, it looks to me like he's the one that's charged the tapes there. 
Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's not a good end to a, a very, very tough night for Jason. He's been on the pace. You can see he just takes a big guess at it. He's absolutely convinced himself that the tapes are going to go. Uh, a and bit and there's no, no movement from no. Freddie at all. No. So although he's looking to the right, he can't really... He'll be frustrated with that. It's been a tough night for him. So the wait continues for semi-final one with the exclusion of Jason Doyle. And um, uh, that's a shame because um, uh, I'm sure he was keen to make the final tonight. It's been a roller coaster of a night for everybody, but particularly that man. And, um, uh, He's done a massive favour for Freddie Lindgren, though. We've seen it already tonight when the guy goes missing off uh, gate three. Just gives you a great run to the corner, a little bit more space. Just three in the rerun now for semi-final one. It won't be too much longer before. In actual fact, the clock is still clicking. So um, uh, it's just 50 seconds, but that may be reset. Um, uh, maybe not, actually. Yes, yeah, so oh, I think that is the time they've got. All right, so this is hurry-up time for all three riders to get themselves back up at tapes. Freddie Lindgren, as you rightly say, has got more room to manoeuvre now without a rider alongside him in gate three. The exclusion light is on for Jason Doyle. That, that confirms that. So here we go then. Second time of asking. I think I've said that before tonight. Once uh, or twice. Yeah. So um, uh, semi-final one. Second time of asking. Bewley doing the pounding that dirt in. He wants to try and get as much traction away from the tapes as he possibly can. In the inside, Dan Bewley in the red helmet colour. Gate number two in blue. Needs Patrick to keep Duda, on the clock. Jason Doyle. Uh, can't, no rider there. And on the outside is Freddie Lingwin. Five seconds to go. Got to get there now. Don't move around now. Behave yourselves. Here we go then. Second time of asking. Semi-final number one. Green light comes on now. Here we go. Takes her up and we're away. Do the a great start. Superb start out of gate number two. Lingwin coming hard around the outside. Beauty though. Holding still. Holding firm. Holds that inside. He's in the second place. But wow, what a start from Patrick Dudek. You can never ride him off. Superb effort from him. Track has behaved so far. That's good news. They're coming out of Cairns MT. Dudek's powering away. Pierre Bewley looking set to make his first final of his career. Oh, this is going to be a big moment for him. But Patrick Dudek, what a start. Yeah, Patrick Dudek fast away. Looks like Jack Holder may have made the right choice going for gate two, even though Smarza could be on the inside. But Dan Bewley solid in that first turn. Absolutely right. They're into the last lap. And it looks like it's going to be Patrick Dudek and Dan Bewley. Bewley making half a mistake, but he's got breathing space with Freddie Lingwin back in third place. What a ride from Dudek. He's in the final and Bewley's winning there. First final of his career in the Grand Prix. Fantastic moment for him. Freddie Lingwin and Jason Doyle missing out this evening. What a ride that was. What a start he had. And the race times are back. 53 seconds. That's more like it. Yeah, Great to, to see. And we're going to get a superb conclusion to this night. I've got to say, the track work did the job. The track uh, definitely held up in that race. It's got two more races to go. Well, there we see the result. Patrick Dudek through to the final. Dan Bewley with him. Freddie Lingren and Jason Doyle missing out this time. And the race time of 53.9 seconds. When you look at it back, it was 56 earlier on tonight. So that is conclusive evidence that the track did behave there. So we will um, hope that semi-final number two produces that. But uh, Patrick Dudek, that was an lightning start. So great composure there, didn't he? Really did nail it. Yeah, he did. And a solid first turn from Dan Bewley. Biggest first turn of his career so far. But Dudek it is. Just gets his handlebars across. Stays down low. But this is where Dan Bewley has to be strong. We know Freddie Lindgren's not going to move out of his way. And uh, he is solid in that first turn. But what a start and a ride from Patrick Dudek. Yeah, this was the moment when I feared for Bewley. He really did have to hang tough there because there's no doubt when you've got a rider like Lingren alongside, he's going to try and intimidate you. Look how tight they were. He was trying to hustle through, but actually, to be honest, Dudek was kind of... You just saw him come out of the throttle there momentarily, and that probably did Bewley a favour. But nonetheless, Dudek and Bewley through. Up at tapes then, semi-final number two. We are waiting for a fourth rider to appear here, which will be Leon Madsen. And uh, he hasn't appeared so far. When you mentioned Jack Holder in uh, that first race, I'm thinking, I don't think he's in this one. Oh, well, you, I was you just talking about his gate pick. <laughs> yes, I was going to be through there for a moment. I think I'm sure he's not out there. No, he's not out there yet. No, he, is no, now. he is now, yeah. So he's up at gate number two. Leon Madsen making his way round with just 48 seconds to go. So time to uh, get himself 
well and truly up the tapes in uh, plenty of time. So here we are then. Good to see the racing return. Line up for second semi-final. Bartosz Marsluk, the championship leader off the inside in red. Jack Holder going great guns tonight in blue, gate two. Mikkel Mikkelsen going well as well, gate number three. And Leon Matson going from the outside, second in the world. So we've got first and second in the world here. In semi-final number two going head to head. Matson needs to make the final, really needs to make the final. If he wants to keep any sort of pressure on Smarslik, needs to get there. Not sure he's in the right frame of mind, we'll see. He may feel a bit better about it, having watched semi-final one when they didn't actually leap about quite as much. So here we are then, Star Marshalls looking pretty happy. He walks away, green lights on, tapes are up and we're underway. And they get to there, what a start for Neil Madsen from the outside. Marshall Smarts, it through in the second place. Jack Holder just squeezed out there with Mickelson at the back. Got to say, that was a sensational start from gate four from Leon Manson. Jack Holder now coming on strong. Barso Smarsnik holding that inside. The uh, first two in the world looking like they could well make the final. Leon Manson needed to do this. And wow, he has produced a stunning opening couple of laps. He has in the championship. And Leon Manson could do with Jack Holder finding a way past Smarsnik. He looks like he's got the pace, but Smarsnik's not going to open the door for him. No, he's not. He's hugging that inside. He's going to need half a mistake, and Holder could be ready to pounce. But for Leon Madsen, just what the doctor ordered, sensational start. Down the back straight for the last time in the second semi. Round he comes. That is a fine ride from the Danish rider. Smarzik through to the final as well. Disappointment for Holder. It's written so well tonight. Mikkel Mikkelsen missing out as well. Holder will be a touch frustrated there. Just couldn't quite get it done in that first turn. And with that explosive start, well, he, we had to wait an age for him to make the mind up, but he made his mind up correctly. Well, he, he thought long and hard about he that. He did indeed. Well, oh, he obviously worked. He did indeed. Fine ride from Leon Matz, and he's through. And uh, so is Bartosz Smarslik. So the top two in the world will go head to head once again in the final. Jack Holder and Mikkel Miss Mickelson missing out this time. You now know the four riders in the final for tonight's match. That was uh, unexpected, but... Uh, well, we did say. question his frame of mind before that race got going, but I have never seen anybody focused to make a start like that, probably since the days of Hans Nielsen, if I'm honest, from the outside. Yeah, this is something quite special here. Uh, watch for Madsen in yellow there on the outside. Oh! Oh, he actually, he actually gets a flyer, and to be fair, from the ref's position, uh, at the time of the race, probably didn't have the opportunity to see that very closely. He's got away he's with right that. up by the fence, he's but he has, he's that. got away with one. But hey, when you need one and you get away with it, fair play to him. Happy days. Good scrap there for third place. I thought Holder might just yeah. be able to get the better of the championship leader, but... Uh, he had the pace, but he just couldn't find the way through. Smiles Nick too smart for him. A little bit untidy, but um, uh, as I say... Um, uh, at the very least, I would say, well, I've got to say that Smiles is not going to be panicking, but uh, there's no doubt that Leon Madsen is keeping his World Championship hopes alive here by making the final, getting away with a very sharp start and uh, dropping the clutch a touch early, but we often see that. Chris just consoling Jack. Jack's going to feel a little bit disappointed. More than he that, will, actually. He will, very very disappointed because he's ridden so well and Dan Bewley's made the final and he would have been desperate to have joined him there as well, but it's not going to be the case this evening. I'll tell you what, if Dan Bewley can uh, get a result in this final, he's going to leapfrog himself up probably into the top six quite easily. Well, 20 points, we'll see him on the 64, so that will make him... Well, he'll be well in there. He'll be well in there. Absolutely, he could be in the top four in the world. So all of a sudden, this man, who always surprises us, looked down in the dumps earlier on, saying it's not safe, it's uh, don't really want to ride, but he's made the final. Can't take it away from him. Psychological, just trying to make everybody think that he uh, wasn't mentally ready for this and uh, make everybody else worry about well, the let me ask you this. and I'll go out there and get a flyer. Yeah, let me, let me ask you this. <laughs> Do you think he was motivated and feeling a little bit happier about things after watching the first semi-final? Very much so. You know, I, I think the track work done was, was fantastic and uh, he could certainly see that in the first semi-final. Uh, the lads getting a, a reasonably comfortable ride compared to the last block of races, so uh, he would have taken heart from that. So no track grading going on now for the final. We're going to go straight through to con the conclusion. I did sort of anticipate they may have been, but uh, correct track conditions clearly are holding up. One more race to go. Madsen delighted. 
Absolutely delighted. 14 points guaranteed for a fourth place. 20 for a win, 18 for second, 16 for third. He's on 60 World Championship points coming into tonight. So really and truthfully, somebody's got to take it to Bartosz and they don't really want to let him go. It's, no, it's not really a stressful situation for Smarslik, but if uh, Leon could win and Smarslik finishes in fourth place, well, that would be a dent in the lead going to Wrocław at the end of the month. That so. would be great for the championship, but uh, I just, I'm not sure if the referee, other than when he actually calls for replays, can actually get to see the programme and the replays, because if he knows he got away with the flyer, he's going to be keeping an eye on him in the final. Oh, absolutely, yeah, and I'm sure he has seen it, because um, he has the same facility we do, so... Paul Morris, a uh, big night for him. Uh, yeah, we are going to see some track grading, so... Um, uh, I did wonder whether this would happen, and it is, and this is unusual. Oli Olsen there on the left, who uh, is actually employed to put the temporary tracks in. So uh, we will see just a uh, bit of track work be carried out before, before we get on with the final. Busy night for Phil. Um, uh, has had to bat off frustration in the pits. Um, uh, of course, everybody's going to be taking out their frustrations on him. But uh... and, and so many people have got an opinion, and uh, this is one of those occasions where riders, there'll be 16 riders in the in the pit lane, and they'll all have a different opinion on how what's best to do and what what Phil should be doing. But he's the one charged with making the decisions. I've got to be honest; I think he's done everything right so far tonight. Okay, interesting to see. I'm not sure. Yeah, well, they're taking every precaution, which is right. We want to see a great final. And uh, the work they did prior to the semis worked, so they're just going to do a touch more just to make sure that those ruts don't appear in the last four laps, well, we hope the last four laps of the evening. Um, it's great to be back here, the Principality, once again hearing the roar of the Speedway bikes. It's been a long night and a tough night for all concerned, but um, uh, with the big final to come, there's going to be the winners and losers. We've got a British rider in here who's ridden out of his skin tonight. He's done a fine job, Dan Bewley. He made his first final of his career. Patrick Dudek, no question about it, has ridden also supremely well. And uh, he'll be looking for a big result, no doubt about that. But as you rightly say, for riders that uh, are well down the pecking order, because it's so tight, you pick up 20 points here, all of a sudden... So, um, uh, while we wait for the track, right... OK, let's get some uh, reaction now on the centre green with Scott Nichols. Yeah, Chris Harris joins me from the amazing TV show Top Gear. I believe it's your first visit to the Speedway venue. Yeah, I've not seen it before. And I have to say, well, those two semis, fantastic. I'm just amazed at the commitment and skill on display. I mean, they're, they're earning their berries tonight. It's absolutely fantastic to watch. Yeah, they're certainly earning their money. Obviously, tonight is quite unique. The track is really rutting up quite bad, considering normally. But you said before I chat to you, from the infield, it's a totally different sense. Yeah, I think the great thing about all motorcycle and motorsport is that you really see what the operator's doing. Down here, you can really see the way they're moving around on the machine, the way they're using that left foot. It's, it's very technical, but it looks violent to me. It looks like they're just hanging on to these monsters. Yeah, so maybe uh, we can ditch a couple of the wheels and we'll get you on the next one for Top Gear and you can have a go. I'll tell you what, I am not man enough for this. I'll give it a go, but it also looks like the, the machine has to be driven at 110%, and otherwise it doesn't work. It's, it has to be working flat out, and I think I'd kill myself straight away. It's a great observation they do. They certainly have to give it some beans. It works only at the top. So uh, just a quick summary, enjoying your night so far. What are your final thoughts? It's fantastic. It's... It's the template for a perfect motorsport evening, isn't it? Because it's not going on for way too long. It's always action, lots of different races. Dead impressed. Well, thanks for joining us. Let you get back in your hot seat and enjoy the final. Yeah, good to hear from Chris Harris. I was a touch confused there because I thought it was... Uh, yeah, Chris, the wrong one. Yeah, Chris Bomber Harris, <laughs> but uh, the Top Gear man, they're clearly enjoying his evening. I tell you what, he's, uh, he's taking it all in very quickly because his comment about having to ride these things at 110% was absolutely spot on. The modern Speedway bike has to be ridden extremely hard. Yeah, so um, uh, quite obs uh, his observations there were spot on. Fair play to him. And sitting on the infield there, it is uh, not easy, actually, because it's... Um, uh, sort of almost get dizzy watching the guys go around. Track rating continuing before the final. And uh, we will um, uh, then have the draw. 
for the all-important conclusion to tonight. I'm not going to ask you for a prediction, Kelvin, because I know you're going to say Bewley, Dudek, Madsen, Smarsley. OK, thank you. Thank you. I'm um, just telling you. You obviously know my mind. I do. Um, I uh, but uh, obviously it would be lovely to see a new winner. We've had five different winners t this season already. And uh, if Bewley could win, then obviously that would be his first victory and a sixth winner this year. But uh, Smarslick may have different ideas. I sense that they'll be much more confident and more relaxed about the fact that the track is being attended to once again. Yeah, they're, they're doing all the right things. It's just, you know, it's a little frustrating for everyone. We're having to uh, watch a little bit of tractor racing again, but it's absolutely the right thing to do. The two semi-finals were concluded fairly and safely, and uh, we want an all-action final. Yeah, we do, and um, I'm sure we're going to get it. It's a, a sparkling lineup, and uh, I've got to say that um, uh, Dudek has surprised me once again. A rider that you don't automatically think is going to adapt himself to a track like this, but has done it in fine style. I do think that Bewley can get away. Interesting to see where he goes for on his gate pick. So we're looking like we're about three minutes away from the action getting underway. We'll have a Obviously, the uh, gate pick for the final. Will Leon Madsen, if he has the opportunity, go for gate four? Possibly. Um, but then he did make, uh, he did have a slight advantage as he came away from the tapes. <laughs> Just a little bit. Um, in his uh, in his semi-final. I, I think if it had been a, any other gate, I'm not sure he would have got away with that. I think he was hidden, wasn't he, by yeah. the fence? So yeah. the referee couldn't quite see exactly what had happened. And, uh, good to see Joe Screen here. And, uh, Fine rider in his day. Jack Holder still getting over it. Can't believe that he's not in the final. And uh, but uh, his, his time's uh, going to come. You yeah. know, he's had great success recently with the gold medal in the Speedway of Nations. Ridden so well, probably deserves morally to be in the final because he's done the business tonight. But that semi-final, you've got to say, it was so often happens, doesn't it? You know, it's real hustle and bustle in the first corner. And he just came out second best. Yeah, he's becoming a real rounded uh, rider. He's got all the attributes he needs. He, he qualified quick, obviously, at the top of the pile. He's making starts. He's racing well. He's riding the bike well. He coped with tough conditions. Uh, he's, he's got it all, all right this weekend. Yep, he has. Just missed out on the uh, final race, but uh, I just sense that there's a final coming for Jack Holder. It won't be too far away. Just like Dan Bewley, I think that... Um, uh, I feel a little bit for the Australians. They haven't got a home round this year, so effectively this is their adopted home in lots of ways. Jack Holder, of course, rides for the Sheffield Tigers in the Premiership here in the UK, so spends a lot of time here, as does his brother Chris, has a home here. So they're uh, very comfortable in this part of the world. So, first tractor has reversed out of the stadium. I don't think it'll be too much longer before that one also disappears. And we will be on for the draw hasn't taken place yet so I'm sure Phil Morris will be rushing back down there to actually conduct proceedings still out on track yeah Phil Morris I think has just given the signal that this is the last lap for the tractor now yeah so after that he'll go down into the pits and actually conduct the draw for the all-important final race um, I've enjoyed it it's been a long night it's been tough but Still good to be back, and I'm pleased that we've got better racing to conclude the night because it was just beginning to get a touch. It was getting away from the riders there for a bit. If the remedial work hadn't have been carried out and carried out well, then the track uh, would have deteriorated. It would have been a farcical finish to, a, to what is a great event. It's been a great night's racing. Yes, the final block of qualifying races was very difficult for the riders, uh, but we're going to see uh, a final that's going to do the event justice. Let's show you how important it is to hang in there because uh, all of a sudden things have improved for the last three races so you know but um, uh, a lesson learned i think by one or two guys tonight particularly those words of wisdom that came through from greg hancock in that interview very interesting i'm sure that may resonate in a lot of riders minds as they leave here this evening yeah you can't be too rigid you know he's, he's just stressed there that you've got to look at each track as an individual case and the Narodovi and, and Cardiff here, they are one-offs and you do need to have something slightly different if you want to give yourself the best chance. Uh, there's no doubt that Greg had uh, plenty of success winning here in the Principality on three occasions. So um, uh, he had a great run of form in this stadium. 
Right, so we'll get a bit uh, more reaction now. Scott Nichols has made his way back to the pits and he's going to be joined by Jack Holder. Yeah, I'm usually doing a, another track prep before the final and I'm joined with Jack. Jack, you had such a, a great night. I know you're obviously gutted to, to not make the final, but uh, all in all, it's been a good night for you. Yeah, mate, devastated. Um, you know, I, I made the right choice by going gate two, but, uh, you know, Leon made a... <laughs> I think he guessed that one because he couldn't hang on for four laps. So, um, yeah, very disappointing. But, yeah, take some positives from this and, um, you know, I showed him that I can get around any track. Yeah, you're in great form, obviously, coming off the back of that awesome Speedway Nation success for the Aussies. You're in brilliant form there, the class rider on the night. You rode the track superbly well. So, like you say, huge positives to take from the night. Yeah, for sure, mate. And, um, you know, mum and dad and girlfriend were here, so, you know, it was uh, put a lot of pressure on myself to, um, you know, do good. But, uh, yeah, I made the semi, but, you know, when you're going all right, you wanted that final. But, hey, -oh, next time, eh? I know you're gutted, mate. Appreciate you talking to us. And uh, maybe you need to drag the missus and your nan along to Wrocław. <laughs> They are, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff, thank you. Well, that's a nice interview. Got a smile on his face, and that's good news. Understand the frustration, um, but um, uh, nonetheless, has time on his side, and I'm sure his moment will come. Will it be that man's moment now, Dan Bewley, who has um, really captured the imagination of the public? So, um, uh, not too long now. We will now pass over to uh, Phil Morris, who will conduct the draw for the final. And first pick of gate choice for the final is Patrick Dudek. Patrick, please select your start position colour. And Patrick selects the red gate position. Dudek doing a fine job tonight. Looking good. And the second rider to select the gate position is Leon Madsen. Please select your start position colour. Leon selects the yellow gate position. So fond memories of uh, the gate number four from his semi. And third choice for the final is Dan Bewley. Please select your colour, Dan. Dan selects the blue gate colour. Two for Dan Bewley. And the fourth rider to select is Bart Dosmarslik, who selects the white gate position. So there we are then. The uh, final lineup is now confirmed with uh, Patrick Dudek on the inside in red, Thank Dan Beauty alongside him in blue. P but a smiles that will come out of gate three in white, and Leon Matson, who didn't hesitate quite as long this time, will go from the outside in yellow. Dan Bewley had a wry little smile on his face as he walked up to the blue quadrant there, so uh, yeah, I, think, uh, I think he's happy to have gate two. He didn't look disappointed, but I've never seen him look disappointed, so um, uh, tough to call that one, but yeah, certainly wasn't unhappy about that. Um, uh, so now, not too much longer now to wait before we get to the conclusion of a dramatic night of Speedway back in Cardiff. The Principality stage is now set for the grand final. 20 years celebration, we've had plenty of dignitaries here, we've had uh, previous uh, Grand Prix winners and we've had legends of the sport here. It really has been a celebration of Speedway um, all night long. A lot of old faces, familiar faces back on the uh, Grand Prix circuit. Great to see. Big moments now for all four riders. And uh, of course, the other three riders have all won Grand Prix on numerous occasions, but it is an opportunity for Dan Bewley now to Right, a wee bit of history here by winning his first Grand Prix. He's already done it by making his first final. And um, as I say, if he gets away here, he'll, he'll win it. What, what an event to get to your first final, and then if you win it, I mean, it, it will be massive for him. Massive. Well, it's been 15 years since we've had a British winner. Chris Harris won in fine style, of course, in 2007. Dramatic style, a similar sort of night, actually, where it uh, track was actually really tough that night as well. And uh, it's... Uh, be something quite special for young Dan Bewley if he could put it off but he's got three very tough competitors and uh, two in particular in Leon Madsen and Barta Smarzik who sit in first and second in the world right now so riders making their way around for the final race of the night and uh, Dudek coming forward immediately into that inside gate 
Bartos smiles like having to settle for gate number three. But as I say, right now, he's kind of still, even though this is tense moments, he's still in a very strong position. He's still going to go away with a healthy lead, come what may here. The best result for the World Championship, of course, if, uh, if uh, Leo Madsen can win and uh, Bartos Smarzik finishes in fourth. So, line up for the final. Dudek on the inside in red. Dan Bewley alongside him in blue. Bartos Smarzik out of gate three in white. Leo Madsen off the outside in yellow. Wow. We've got here. Yeah. We've had to be patient, but yeah, we've got yeah. here. We've, we've, we've waited for it, but I think it's going to be worth waiting for. It is going to be tense. It's going to be tight into that first turn. So, two Polish riders. Brit and a Dane, so an international lineup here. Will Dan Bewley blow the roof off by winning here? By the way, by the way, I just repeat, that, that's Dan Bewley. I think they may okay. have just that's called Dan Bewley. We can't hear ourselves think, but, that, but I can assure you that was Dan Bewley being introduced. Will Leon Madsen get away with another flyer? I don't think so. I think Mr. Steentoff may be wise to that now. He'll be watching him. And of course, uh, Bartos Marsden's not going to make it easy on that run to the first corner, that's for sure. So, it's been a roller coaster of a night. Four laps to go to determine the winner after a three year gap in the Principality. The final of the night then. Green light comes on now. Takes her up and we're underway. Julie's made a great start out of gate number two. Fires himself to the front. Draws down the first corner. Smarzik now into second place with Dudek slipping back into third. Madsen didn't make it from the outside gate. Julie out in front. Looking like a winner from there for me. Absolutely sensational start. You said Chris, he had a smile on his face. And so it proved. Brilliant stuff from Bewley. Yeah, he had a smile that oozed with confidence as gate two became available. And he has taken this one, the ball by the horns. Look at him go. Whoa. Making the bike work perfectly. He's leaving Smarz looking his way. Absolutely. Out in front, just over a lap to go for Dan Bewley. Smarz Lick, the championship leader. That's no bad result for him. One last big effort for Bewley down the back straight. Here he comes. Listen to the crowd. Take him home. The winner in the Principality. Dan Bewley. What a ride. What a ride from that young man. This is a moment he will never forget. Absolutely right. Stunning performance. Absolutely jet propelled away from gate number two. What an at a canter. Bartos Smarzlik in second place. Patrick Dudek back in third. But the night belongs to Dan Beauty from Great Britain. He picks up 20 World Championship points, moving on to 64. What a night. And the first British winner in 15 years, Chris. We've had to wait a long time, but by golly, it was worth the wait. Yeah, his camp are going to be partying tonight. That was done so fantastically well. He made an electric start. He made the bike work in, the, in all four laps. He didn't make any mistakes, and he can rightly celebrate. Uh, look that down there with Steve Lawson, a man who really has worked tirelessly to get him to this point. Dan Beauty comes of age, so close in Gorgeroff, of course, last time out. But now his first final, and guess what? He's won it. Fantastic performance. Bartosz Smarzlik will be more than happy with 18 points, particularly as Leon Madsen has slipped back into fourth place, pick out 14, and Dudek on the rostrum with him. So for Smarzlik, extending his lead once again. Uh, good night for Smarzlik. He's just showing his appreciation to the fans, but tonight. It's all about Dan Bewley, so accomplished. And there's Smarzlik showing his appreciation for what Dan has achieved. I thought he was going to give him a toe there to get the bike running. <laughs> he's eventually done it, but he yeah, started in fine yeah. style, Chris. His first two opening rides tonight were just sensational. Just dipped a bit in his third and fourth rides, finished with the flowers in his fifth qualifying ride. But that ride in the final was something that was a sight to behold. And I'll say it again. Young man comes of age here tonight in the Principality. This place is just blowing the roof off. I mean, crikey, can't get any louder. But this is a special moment, a moment he will never, ever forget. I don't think they're going to stop him going round, to be honest. I think he'll be going round till he runs out of fuel. The winner on the night is Dan Bewley. He's done it in wonderful style, delights the home crowd. And how about that, winning your first Grand Prix in the Principality Stadium at home? The last winner 15 years ago, and it's great to have Chris Harris, Bomber Harris, here tonight to witness it. I'm sure he's absolutely delighted for uh, that. He'll be the over moon for him, and uh, 
Steve Lawson told me this guy doesn't get excited when he wins a race. He seems pretty excited to me. Uh, rightly so. Yes, uh, I don't think anybody's going to uh, excuse that. But no, a brilliant moment for him. I'm sure he's going to make the very uh, most of it. It's going to take a little while to settle in, I'm sure, and just sink in exactly the achievement he's done. But more and more than that, he's now in the championship chase because he's rocketed to 64 World Championship points. He's in the top six comfortably. And Dan Bewley, what a night for him. Yeah, this, this guy, how far can he go? He is just growing in confidence. It's great to see these young guys coming along. Jack Holder, disappointed not to make the final, but this is absolutely a fantastic result for the youngsters, and particularly that man there. And when he reflects on the fact that he shouldn't, you know, with the uh, suspension of the Russian riders, he wasn't even going to be here, so no, a remarkable no. moment. Dan Bewley won the final nicely. Bartosz Schmarslik back in second place, Patrick Dudek in third, and Leon Madsen didn't get the flyer he was looking for this time off the outside, <laughs> no, he and uh, he uh, finished fourth. But uh, the top three tonight, Bewley, Schmarslik and Dudek. I don't think that smile's going to disappear for some considerable to tie. So here's the... Uh, standings after the qualifying races obviously Bewley and Jack Holder going through on 12 but uh, the world championship points will be allocated now subsequently so we will see what they scored on the night and then actually what the standings are there which will be very interesting to see the standings moving towards there's the points on the night 24 Bewley 18 for Smarsdick Dudek on 16 14 for Madsen Holder 12 Lingwin 11 Doyle on 10 and Mickelson on 9 and then obviously the guys that didn't make the semi-finals 8, 7, 6, 5, 4 right down to the bottom and uh, that's the uh, points that are awarded for this Grand Prix but uh, now we can uh, hopefully have the update of the standings so we're going to see the replay first yeah well why not you know this was a fantastic race uh, for Dan Bewley it makes a textbook start keeps it all controlled all smooth all the right things Smarsnik there just dives down to the inside make sure he uh, gets himself ahead of Patrick Dudek he's chasing the world championship and done himself no harm here in that respect tonight but tonight will be remembered for that man there Dan Bewley he will be celebrating long into the into the night here in Cardiff. Busy man racing all over Europe, but he is going to remember this one for a long, long time. Absolutely, celebration time. Plenty of British support there. Clearly, overjoyed with the performance. As I say, 15 years ago, Chris Harris came through in a dramatic finish to the Grand Prix that night. Not quite such a dramatic finish tonight, but when you consider what we've been through this evening. Got to say that uh, he had a great, great uh, performance there at uh, the conclusion of events. So now we can get down and we can hear from the winner now. He joins Scott Nichols. Yeah, your FIM Speedway Grand Prix round six winner. This man here, Dan Bewley. Dan, you make your first final and you go and win it in arguably the best venue on the calendar. Yeah, <laughs> I actually thought about this in Gorjov, you know, about winning and uh, I had a speech and some people I wanted to thank and all kinds, but now I'm here, I just, uh, I've got, after the second lap, I kind of, I don't know, I seized up and uh, I just want to say thanks to everybody for cheering me on tonight, you know, thanks to the boys in the pits for working hard and, uh, you know, thanks to everyone who makes it work, sponsors and friends and family here and some working fans and fans from all over England and all over the world, Poland, and uh, it's just been awesome, what a night. An amazing night, and he got off to a perfect start, two race wins. Obviously, I know this is gonna take a while to settle in, but uh, I have to ask you, did you have a plan going into that final? Uh, I actually wanted gate two, but then I was thinking, uh, you know, I should probably go one, and then um, after the semi, I didn't have much choice, so it worked out pretty good. So uh, just, yeah, make the start and try and get in front. The track's a lot easier in front, so, uh, no, uh, after the first lap, I thought, you know, put one good lap in and then, uh, you know, I think it's the wrong thing to do, look behind, but I kind of seen I had a bit of a lead and, uh, you know, seized up, but uh, we got the job done and, uh, you know, just once again, thanks to the boys in the pits and uh, thanks for everybody for supporting me tonight. Just finally, how were the nerves partway through the race and just, how were the nerves partway through the race Did you seized up? Was the heart race kind of just off the scale? Yeah, it was off the scale in the semi, actually, when we had one minute for the rerun, but, uh, 
No, you know, I love pressure and uh, I think you've got to earn pressure and it's cool, but, uh, you know, after two laps, I don't think that's pressure. I think you get a little bit, you know, confident and uh, you seize up, but uh, no, this is awesome, but uh, it's still a long way to go in the season, so look forward to the next one, but, uh, you know, this is one I'm never going to forget. Mate, in the meantime, enjoy tonight. Soak it up. Well done, Dan Bewley. Yeah. Fab fabulous moment for Dan Bewley. And uh, as I say, he said it himself, it's a, a special moment, a moment that he will remember forever. We'll take a look at the championship standings, and this will make interesting reading. Smarzik on 96, moving away now with a 22-point lead over Leon Madsen. Dudek on 65, Dan Bewley into fourth place in the world. Wow, amazing, what a night. Freddie Lindgren there in fifth. Matze Yanofti slipping out now to sixth. Ty Wolfenden obviously struggling this evening. Jason Doyle in eighth. Martin Vasilik, wow. He missed out big time, but um, uh, what a night for Dan Bewley, but Bartosz Smarslik in charge. So here we go then for presentation of the top three on the evening. Patrick Dudek will be the uh, first man to come forward, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, here's he. Here comes Patrick now. A good performance from Patrick Dudek tonight, once again showing great skill on the bike. Really did ride strongly right the way through and uh, rightly so gets on the roster and I think he'll be really pleased with that and a, a very nice result for him. Yeah, battled hard all night long, stuck to the task, great job. Second place on the night. The championship leader came in with an 18-point lead. Bartosz Marslik, congratulates his compatriot, leaves the Principality with a 22-point lead in a championship. Uh, I would say that's uh, job done. Yeah, I think he'd be very happy with that. He said five Cardiff appearances and five finals now. Yeah, good point, great start. Dan Bewley coming forward now. Fabulous reception for young Dan. A special moment for him to stand on top of the box. The winner on the night. Rode so well. He's had a second and third midway through the qualifiers, but all of a sudden, things just fell into place. Lovely. Track was better in the final, but by crikey, once again, we saw that stunning speed that he can produce, and the other boys had really no answers at all. And you see Graham Brody coming forward to present uh, the third place trophy to uh, Patrick Dudek. Fine job. 20-year celebration trophies coming forward amazing we've been coming here for 20 years amazing yeah, unbelievable 2001 when tony rick Hardson won that night that was the second place trophy now i might like to get coming forward to present a good job done for the championship leader looking like it's going to be awfully difficult to peg him back um, uh, looking set for a third world championship, you've got to believe. And, um, uh, doing what he needs to do, he's just going about the job very professionally. Yeah, he is. Uh, the fans predicted this victory for Dan Bewley was coming. Great moment for Ronnie O'Sullivan to come forward now to present the winner on the night. Seven times snooker world champion. I'm sure he's enjoyed his night. But I'll tell you what, Dan Bewley's enjoyed it more. Standing up there to win the British Grand Prix on your first attempt. That really is quite a remarkable <laughs> In your effort. your first final. Exactly, so uh, it doesn't get any better than that. And uh, as I say, he'd be delighted. Right, let's pause now for the national anthem.
The national anthem rings out around the principality. Last out, hugely proud moment for young Dan that will. I think the emotions Ladies are beginning to, the realisation of what he's actually achieved are just beginning to be recognised. It'll take a little while, but an um, uh, excellent moment for him. Uh, take, a bow, uh, uh, take a bow, Dan Bewley. A deserved victory. He's a touch tired as well. It's been a hard night, a long night, a nutritional night. Yeah. Um, but he's coming through in flying colours, there's no doubt about that. Uh, as I say, he'll be back for more. A lot of people talking about this man actually being the next British world champion. I think they maybe, I don't know. Let's just step that up another gear. Yeah, that's it. it but it's going to happen, isn't it? You can't stop it. You know, winning like that. And the form is shown. He's just gained in confidence. And you could see it coming. You know, everybody sort of latched onto it. And then to produce that now here on one of the biggest stages in the world. Um, uh, I'll tell you what, it is a special moment. Of course, uh, Smart Slick has experienced it. He knows what it's like to win here. Dudek hasn't, but uh, nonetheless, a great result for him anyway. Yeah, it stands an unassuming young man, but how high is his confidence going to be now coming away from Cardiff? Yeah, it's, it's all about you know, maintaining it, isn't it? You know, like he's just going to have to keep his feet on the ground, which he will do because he's that sort of lad. Do, yeah. But, um, uh, you know, all of a sudden now, people are fourth in the world. You know, all of a sudden, it, it's a completely different landscape for him moving forward with, you know, uh, four rounds to go. Uh, if he can maintain his performance, he's going to have a big say in the outcome of the World Championship. Yeah, he's no longer thinking about top six. He's looking at a podium in the World Championship yeah. now. Exactly right. And it's more than possible. Just 10 points behind Leon Matson in second place. So, um, uh, I've got to believe that he'll be targeting that. Tomorrow, of course, we'll be looking forward to SGP2. It will be 1 o'clock local time, to obviously 2 o'clock Central European time. Don't miss that. That will be action-packed for the young lads tomorrow. SGP2, second round. We will get underway at 1 o'clock local time. So, a wonderful night of Speedway. It's been a long night, but the night belongs to Dan Bewley. Fabulous scenes. We will see.